Yeah, yeah, we. Holy freaking hell, the match of our dreams made us all ooh, ah, and scream. Ishii and Shingo brought the house down, and the House of Black expands even further than AEW. And we now know who could be the ultimate worker as we got our main event for Bound for Glory. This and so much more I'm sure we're going to bring up as we once again discuss all things wrestling. Hello, professional wrestling fans, viewers, new and old, and simple people alike. You know what this is. This is the ATW crew bringing you, once again, another ATW view. I am the simple man, Noah Foster, and joining me tonight on this panel is, of course, I say, I say the preacher man, Casey Flynn, and the all-elite king himself, King Anthony, King A-Train. Gentlemen, let's just cut straight to the chase. This last week of professional wrestling once again continues to show absolutely anything is possible. It never leaves you wanting anything less but more. Whether you look at AEW, NJPW, PWG, the independent wrestling scene, galore, you name it, there is so much to be positive and excited about in all things wrestling. But like the world and like those uh, just positions, uh, it was the best times, it was the worst times. There's also that stuff that I'm sure we're going to rant about as well in the wrestling industry. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and get right into anything that's on our minds. Now, again, you know us, folks. We're ATW. We talk all things wrestling. There's no structure. There's no script. There's no filtering. There's nothing banned. And I'm not monetized, so these guys can go freaking R18 if they want. But that being <laughs> said... Uh, I do want to start simply with this, and I'm sure that you guys are going to have a huge disposition on it. Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson, was it worth the wait? Now, I think you already know what I'm going to say, but this isn't about me. This is about wrestling, and this is about a wrestling family sharing their joy. And I know you two have a lot of joy to share just from what I just asked. With that being said, Casey, you're the preacher man for a reason. I want your thoughts on Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson first. What did you think? What I thought about Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson kicking off Grand Slam this past Wednesday was it did not disappoint whatsoever. I mean, it was an instant classic from start to finish. Both of these guys are very tough physically and mentally in that ring. I mean, both of their hearts, they have warrior hearts and spirit in that ring. I mean, both of these guys had a never give up attitude and both of these men did not want to lose this match. That's why it went to a draw for a reason because it was so great and so epic because no matter what and result was, whether it was a draw or a mega wins or Brian wins, give both of these guys standing ovation for putting on one hell of a wrestling clinic that very night. And I can see Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega running this back again at AEW Full Gear in Minneapolis that's going to take place. And will it be for the AEW world title? Probably and probably not. But we shall wait and see where this goes down the road with Kenny Omega and Brian Anderson. Because this is not the end of Kenny Omega and Brian Anderson's feud. It is just starting. And with that draw this past Wednesday, that, that was just the beginning of their feud right there. And this, and it's going to be epic, epic matches on a AEW. And I say save Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson for AEW Full Gear in Minneapolis because that is a pay-per-view worthy match and they're going to Steal the show at Minneapolis when that match takes place at full gear. Very good opening statements and interesting fantasy booking, considering how short it seems. Because in AEW, it's like nothing slows down 
how short it seems until we're actually at the next period. But as you alluded to, yes, it is official in Minneapolis in the Target Center during, I believe, the second week of uh, November. We will once again go the final pay-per-view for AEW's quarterly schedule for the year 2021 AEW Full Gear. And last year, I stand by it. Personally, to me, last year's Full Gear match card was the best built variety order flow professional wrestling premium match card I saw in all of 2020. Will they do the same thing again in 2021? I don't know after what we saw back at AEW All Out, but of course we all talked about that nonstop on the review. Uh, that being said, great thoughts. All right, King. And now again, you are literally wearing the elite. This is the guy of the elite. While they are equals, let's be honest, the elite is Kenny by God. Omega. Your thoughts on that match. Take it away. Ooh. If you would have told me that in 2021 that I'll see Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson in an AEW ring in front of 20,177 people in Queens, New York at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which, by the way, broke the non-WWE pay-per-view attendance record set by WCW Nitro in 98. I think it was 98 or 99. I'm not sure, but it was between one of those years. Which wow. Congratulations to you on that part. Great I would have called you a lot because these two – basically left a classic in that ring and also left it open for a part two with that time limit draw. I basically, like, I've seen good matches of 2021. I've seen great matches. I've seen phenomenal matches. It's like a little tear where I'm going with this. If you was to put this match right here, I will put it phenomenal. Phenomenal. Technical wrestling at its finest because of the fact that it was Brian's first match since April, since he was last on SmackDown against Roman. And that one was a good one on wow. SmackDown. And Kenny, Kenny's been on this momentum ever since, man, ever since he had that AEW world championship back in December and winter is coming. It's like it, what he said was right. You want the best belt machine? You want the cleaner? He was there, but now if you really want him, careful what you wish for. We're getting it. The best belt machine, the cleaner himself is basically took in, like, I've seen, and I mean, I've seen his New Japan run years ago, and oh my God. Still one thing, bring back Devil Sky, but that's a different subject for a different topic. Still my, <laughs> one of my favorites. We'll talk about that on a different subject. All right, fair but, enough. But that rise in a Terminator, and it, I was like, yep, this is really giving me New Japan Pro Wrestling Kenny on this dream match. Because he usually will hit the rise of the Terminator, but we starting to see he hasn't hit it so much, in my opinion. He only pulls it out on big matches. And with the one against Brian was a big match. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think they kicked it out of third gear. I don't think they really kicked it out of third gear. We was just getting in the third gear. We didn't even reach the climax. We didn't even reach the end game. We just basically stayed in third gear. Imagine if what it would if it would have been like if we really kicked it into that fourth gear or that fifth gear, the end gear. Can you imagine that? But that's why they left it open for part two, which full gear, I can see it, but a certain hangman. Might have something to say about that. I mean, I mean, we don't know the extended time of when Hangman's going to be off. We don't know the extended time. But if he's back in time for full gear for Saturday, November 13th at the Target Center, then let's pick up from where we left off between Omega and Paige for the AEW world title, because as much as I love Kenny's run as AEW world champion, you got to give it a hangman. Because right now, I don't think there's another bigger baby. I mean, I don't think there's another bigger baby face right now in AEW that's been missed this much as uh, Adam Hangman Page. And but basically the story revolving basically from oof, 2019, 2020 and so, so forth was for AE, for Adam Page to be AEW world champion. And I would like to see that heartfelt moment as a, as a respectable 
you know, as much as I am an elite fan, but I also respect other people and their work as well. So that's why I feel like if Hangman is back in time, let's do it. Let's pull the trigger. Let's have Omega and Paige. Let's give them a classic. I mean, ain't it obvious that we'll, I mean, basically one year ago, they faced each other in the finals. And now here we are one year later and it's come full circle. So if he is back in time, let's run it back for, but for the AEW world title. As far as Brian and Omega goes, I'm going to make a bold prediction. Let's do it in 2022. Pay-per-view revolution. Ah. Well, it is the first new pay per view found for Super AEW, but yeah, you guys made some great points. First off, yeah, I, again, I watch all things wrestling. You guys know me. I watch more wrestling than all of you combined. But this match right here, out of everything I've watched, I know I say MLTY a lot, but there's a certain atmosphere. There's a certain chemistry. There's a certain setup, saga, suspension of disbelief. That truly makes me believe this is the standout match of the year. That, to me, truly was the standout match of the year. Perfect result. Luke's were still fighting, for Pete's sake, after the bell freaking rang. And while the crowd was booing it, the crowd realized, yeah, this was the way to go because you want to see this again. And as you alluded to, Brian Danielson, the American Dragons, first AEW in-ring match. First professional wrestling match as the American Dragon since friggin' Ring of Honor. And he said this is the most dangerous. And as we saw on Elevation tonight, he didn't want to start slow. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be tested. He wanted to truly see how great these people are, but how great he could be. Because he knows how great he is, the humble professional wrestler he is. And, uh, yeah, uh, definitely took a mental and physical toll on both men. Why can't I put out that tweet? There will be no rematch. Something tells me a tweet is not as strong as a professional wrestling's identity because – there is no way in hell I don't see this match not happening again at some point. Now, whether or not it is for the title, like you alluded to, maybe at full gear, or just maybe for some weird reason, like New Japan Pro Wrestling booking long term, for those that remember the incredible saga of Omega and Okada, because I could see these two building something as great as that. It could potentially be, like you said, Revolution, part two, or even part three, a friggin' no time limit thing. Maybe not two out three falls. Just see how the hell far you can go and who gets the damn win. But bottom line is this. Definitely hope I see this match again. Definitely know I will see this match again. But as far as the title, I've been saying it since day zero. Since he came into the company. The true organically grown AEW performer. The shadow originally part of the elite. No longer part of the elite. Walks alone. Truly not more than ever. AEW is the longest term storytelling of the crowning of Hangman Adam Page as AEW World Champion. So if anybody's taking that belt off Omega, I still believe in my heart it is Hangman Adam Page. And if they don't do it at full gear, it would surprise me. But if there's one thing we know about AEW, they sure as hell are not predictable, and they damn sure know how to do a long-term story and deliver. So honestly, if they don't do that full gear, I would not be surprised. If they do it some weird December or Dynamite special, or even the last time of the year and call it something super big like New Year's Smash or Countdown or something totally different than that, it wouldn't surprise me. But I do see him and Adam Page finally, finally becoming the AEW World Champion within the next year. It's just a matter of when, not if. And the same thing applies to Brian Dances with Kenny Omega, too. All I got to say is stay tuned. Holy shit, what a start to that show. Speaking of that show, exactly. let's go ahead and uh, open up the board to all of you that want to talk about any match, any moment, or any questions you have. Because as you know, we did go through AEW Grand Slam Week at our Ash Stadium with over 20,000 professional wrestling fans having the fucking time of their life. And we had four hours of professional wrestling, not just Grand Slam Dynamite, but Grand Slam Rampage, the first Rampage, I might add, since the creation of this brand and this show, to give us two hours. And keep in mind, this show will strictly stay on TNT. We know Dynamite is moving to TBS. So I know there's a lot of things to think about in the long term, but let's look at the short term, what has happened and what we think is maybe to come. So with that being said, I now open the floor to either of you to talk about your thoughts on AW Grand Slam League. A match, a wrestler, someone you hope to see, maybe which one you like better. 
I open the floor to either of you to speak about anything from last week's Grand Slam week of AEW. Oh, man. Powerhouse Hobbs and CM Punk. I want to touch on that because some people don't still don't understand why Punk came back to professional wrestling. Some people don't understand that fact. If, like, if you go back and watch that match on Friday with Hobbs and Punk, it's one of the, Punk that is one of the reasons why Punk came back because he wants to get people some shine. He wants to give people some offense and put them over while, you know, basically saying, you know, I'm still going to finish you off, but I'm going to let you get some offense in. Bob, Hobbs got basically the best offense in that match. I mean, he really took it to Punk in that match. He really gave Punk a run for his money, except for that one botch of that Eric Carano. Oh, that was a nasty landing. But, I mean, but at the end of the day, you still can't doubt this man. This man's passion, this man's raw emotion is, like, you can tell it's it's back. It's still back. I mean, it's never going to go away. I mean, Punk's passion and raw emotion for professional wrestling is tenfold. It is unreal. It's basically telling you how much he misses this, how much he misses coming down that aisle, hearing cults of personality, hearing thousands and millions of fans basically screaming for him, chanting for him, sing, even singing living color cult of personality. And, you know, the man can't help it but just crack a smile because, like, even him himself still can't believe that, wow, I'm here in one of the best wrestling companies in the world. And basically, I'm hearing thousands and millions of fans scream, you know, chant, cult of personality, all this. And he even said it, it's hard for him to get pissed off. He like it's hard for him to get pissed off. He he, he said it on Wednesday. I mean, it's kind of hard not to when you've been away from the sport for I mean from the professional wrestling sport for seven years, but yet you still have those allegiance of fans that still hang on to every word that you say, no matter to be in a wrestling ring or on social media. It's it's a crazy fan base that punk has had and still got to this day. But Whenever CM Punk is in that ring, you still have them CM Punk chills to where you feel like you still can't believe he's an AEW. You still can't believe that this is the company that brought back CM Punk out of all people. Like, but Hobbs and Hobbs and Punk put on a good match to like basically start off the show. I mean, it was basically a CM Punk type match, psychotic, the psychology of warfare. Uh, technical wrestling got that in there and I mean even some strength and power offense from Hobbs which by the way Hobbs got a good spine buster it literally reminds me of Arn Anderson a little bit so and then what CM Punk said on Wednesday powerhouse Hobbs going to go to sleep and he did just that put him to sleep now it begs me to this I mean uh, um, Ricky Starks announced on his Twitter now he's going to face um, Darius Lockhart on Dark tomorrow. Do we move on to Ricky? Or is Hook's first match going to be against Punk? Because this is far from over with Team Taz. I still say this is far from over because you still got to deal with Hook. You still got to deal with Ricky Starks. So, but the question is... It's like, how do you range his opponents? Is we, are we going to go to Ricky? And are we going to go to Hook? Which basically, that's not how I would do it. I would, if Hook is ready, get like, like, like that um, Twitter account. I'd be on Twitter, send Hook Twitter account. Send Hook. Send Hook first. Then we move on to Ricky. That's how I would see it in my, you know, bookie. I like that a lot. I like how you really focus on that match and how, again, AEW is there to work as a team for each other, but they're definitely right. trying to push the industry forward. And Paras has been one of the brightest, young, up-and-coming prospects AEW has really pushed forward and I feel has flourished under the big lights. Powerhouse Hobbs, biggest match in his in-ring oh. career, stepping in the ring with CM Punk, and the way that they delivered it on commentary afterwards, even saying CM Punk didn't win, 
He just survived. You ever pissed off the CM Punk one, but Hobbs took him through the ringer, and boy, did Hobbs did that. And even with that scary spot, kudos to Hobbs continuing forward to finish out the match. And Punk, again, he kept the match going forward, too. I don't think it hurt Hobbs in uh, any way. It's like they alluded to an AJ when restricted. Tony Schiavone and Aubrey Everest talking about, why does CM Punk beat Darby Allen? Darby Allen's dead. Line up, you fucking marks. Uh, literally, yeah, I went there. Uh, literally, they're not there about simply just wins and losses. Why the rankings is about wins and losses matter. AEW is not to say about just being the champion. It's now about putting someone as the champion. It's about putting forward the future of professional wrestling. And people like Powerhouse Hobbs, Darby <laughs> on even Hook, who has yet to have an in-ring match, but has been a centerpiece of Team Taz every time they're on AEW promo product. And, of course, you said absolutely he starts charisma out of this world, a world champion, no doubt in my mind. The list goes on and on when you think about the brighter prospects, including Brian Pillman Jr., MJF, women-wise. You got Julia Hart. You got legit Layla Hurst. You got Jade Cargill. She looks like she was made out of stone. The possibilities mm-hmm. are endless for AEW, and I really like how you looked at that match. Now, before I let Casey talk about his Grand Slam moment, match, or competitor, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I've got some news maybe for you. Per our inquirer, our inquisitor, the one and only representing at Near Reality Entertainment, please welcome to the ATW building brought to our brother, Eric Brown. Eric, welcome to the ATW building brought to. Uh, good to see you. Hey. Everything's going well. We're, we're talking about AEW Grand Slam. While you get yourself uh, together, I'm sure you'll have news to share too, because I expect you to. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm on break right now. I'm on my 15 minute break since everything's slow right now. So I just wanted to stop by and say hi. I got some news for you all. That's why I want to hear. Go ahead, man. And it's good to hear you. The Hurt Business is back. Really? They reunited. All the Rock Night. Oh. All of them or just like Shelton? Shelton and Cedric. MVP well, still hurts. Well, I'll be damned. Wow. Damn. And there's gonna be a, and there's gonna be a steel cage match between Biggie and, and 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 Bobby Lashley tonight. So let's give away the pay-per-view of Extreme Rules <laughs> on Raw free TV. So that's for making Extreme Rules completely pointless. Oh, God. Even more pointless than it was last night. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Trust me, folks. We'll have thoughts about yeah, unextreme rules that's later on. <laughs> that discussion. I did not watch. I watched uh, Grand Slam Dynamite for the second time. So. <laughs> I mean, Wait, you didn't watch? You didn't watch Sac State Virginia versus Cody Ibushi for twenty minutes? I watched that too. I watched that too. Thank you for the reminder over the weekend. Thank we're going to talk about these people rest. We haven't even talked about that. There's a reason why I got these two shirts up here. <laughs> I watched. Yeah, I, like I just I, heard I, this, and I was like, "Well, let's hope they're on the show still." But uh, yeah, <laughs> well, that, hey, hey, there you go. Uh, anything else in your mind, uh, Eric? <laughs> uh, let's see. Apparently, uh, let's see. One thing I did hear is that uh, let me double check. Um, apparently, Chris Jericho revealed that Elimination Chamber back in two thousand two for Survivor Series. You know, the original one? It yeah. was originally supposed to be a War Games match. A War Games? In Madison Square Garden? Damn. But you want to know why Vince stopped it? Uh, why? Yeah. Why? Oh, why? this is good. It was too WCW. I knew it. I <laughs> knew it. <laughs> it was Triple H. He would have did that a heartbeat. That's why Triple H brought War Games. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant. Uh, so you know, so, so I'm pretty certain that means that War Games is probably dead now in NXT Takeover World. Well, oh, again, we'll, we'll, NXT Takeover in November will never be the same again. Nope, just Survivor Series. That's it. I wonder if they're going to even call that Takeover, or if Vince is even going to do Takeovers. Also, oh, no, what? no, something, something finally happened. Like, guess what Seth Rollins revealed? Said freaking villains. I'm guessing on the book and skull uh, sessions, he revealed something. I have a chance to. I even kind of look. What do you say? He finally admitted, yes, after Hell in a Cell 2019, I wanted to strangle Vince and I had to be held back. So he was pissed as everyone else and finally admits, yeah, it was stupid. So it wasn't on him. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it took you. 
It, it took him two and a half years. Oh, and guess who also spoke? Everybody speaks on Stone Cold. Oh, yes. Who? Oh, Ray oh, White guess. spoke and said, wait until you hear my reaction. Let him in. Let him speak. That's all I got to say. And again, yes, a conversation piece for sure, especially considering what's going to be happening in a certain city this week. But I digress. Well, at least we know Seth Rollins isn't a total tool. <laughs> Still somewhat. He's finally waking up. Yeah, well, I mean, when you got professional wrestling being acknowledged in a brighter light, even people under WWE's eyes got to realize that by now. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what Seth Rollins also decided to reveal out of weird nowhere? Out of nowhere? What? what? He revealed, I have a couple years left on my contract. 2023. What could the AEW scene look like then? Imagine if Tyler Black goes to AEW. Tyler Black versus Adam Cole, baby. Oh, no, 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 no. I got a perfect idea. Let's have him fight Chris Statlander in the intergender match just to make fun of the fact that he said that intergender wrestling is unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> I, I, I got a better one. I got a better one. Go for it, Casey. Instead of the Chris Statlander one, how about Tyler Black versus Mackie Ito? Oh, Lord. I don't think Maki Ito could, uh, you know, handle Seth Ron's ego. Well, then again, she does. She does have that ridiculously hard headbutt. Yeah. Well, I guess she makes me happy. But anyway. <laughs> also, two more pieces of news I want to say. So apparently, Vince McMahon is actually open to working with Scott Steiner again. So clearly, he doesn't have an issue with him. And why does he just call him by his freaking real name? Because I have no idea. Uh, damn, I thought you were going to have a apparently, appa- appa- apparently, Vince. Vince offered him a Legends contract a few years back, and he said no. Gee, I wonder why. You think about Scott Steiner's run in the WWE. Yeah, but Vince did, but it was reported, it was reported that Vince, it was reported that Vince that was reportedly open to the idea of working and talking with Scott Steiner and working out any issues he might have with them. Well, Scott Steiner, he is a big name. Draw that money. Draw them ratings. The genetic plus, look at Goldberg. He came back. Look at Goldberg. He came back. Yeah, that's a we don't want to story. talk about that. No, that that run is just no. No, I don't I even consider like, it as a run. I, I feel like Scott Steiner is not as political as Goldberg. If that makes any sense. Yeah, maybe that is because oh, Goldberg. So, oh, oh, oh um, two things. One, Adam Cole said he wants to work with New Japan Pro Wrestling again. I was going to talk about that, too, because I just got done listening to the Oro Sessions uh, live, and he said he would love to go back to uh, New Japan and work with uh, the likes of, yeah, he had a singles match with Hiroshi uh, Tanahashi, but he ultimately wants to face Blaine Mecha Kasuchika Okada. Also, I think, I, sure. I, I think WWE has caught wind of what AEW might be planning to do next year for the UK. Yeah, I saw that. Apparently, they're going to host oh, their own big God. show there, too. Why well, don't we're going to have a pay per view? Yeah, apparently. Listen, a go back to do a pay per view. Bring back Insurrection, because that's the one pay per view I missed as a kid. Bring Honestly, I don't, think they'll, I, I don't think they'll bring back Insurrection, considering what happened earlier this year. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. that's true. Yeah. Oh, true. yeah. yeah. Mm. Probably yeah. a bad idea, King. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the last big WWE show they had there was NXT UK TakeOver. You could bring back Rebellion. That was also another um, UK pay-per-view that was in Manchester. Bring back Rebellion. Isn't that what also technically it's like Insurrection, though? Rebellion, no. Insurrection. I wouldn't compare those two. I don't think a super source no, I would compare that. Insurrection when, you know, that right. incident happened. Rebellion had no part in it. But I guess you could say it was rebellious actions, King. <laughs> yeah. No, no, wait, wait. What event do you think I'm talking about? Oh, uh, I'm not talking know. about the plane. I'm not talking about the plane ride incident. 
Uh, I figured you were talking about what happened in January I thought we were, or something. Yeah, like I thought that's what you were going with. That was the plane ride. I was talking about the one in January. I no, I figured it was talking about the January. one in January. Remember, King? Eric, refresh him. Oh, refresh me. Uh, the capital. The capital. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I would. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if you was like, we can't bring those names up after what happened last time. Well, here's the thing. How much of Vince, how much does Vince actually remember that versus someone telling him? Yeah. Um, he's friends with the guy. I think that's enough reasoning. Well, I mean, hey, Vince changes on the dime. I'm sure his friends list is as small as a freaking mm -hmm. in the air circle. Also, um, two more things before I have to go. Um, one, sure. uh, one is uh, Jake Roberts recently underwent foot surgery, which is why he's been gone. I figured it had to be some sort of like surgery related incident because I don't think he's. Mm -hmm. been, yeah. not they haven't said anything about COVID. Then again, AEW doesn't expose anything like that on the news. Also, um, Dodo and Fox's network relationship is strained. Strained? Yeah, Fox is finally was like, okay, Vince, you're losing us. We're, we're, we're regretting this. But I brought I brought Sasha Banks back. Damn it! What else you want? Uh, they, remember they offered to pay CM Punk themselves if WWE can get him back. Look, we'll pay. We'll cover CM Punk's contract. Just do not let him go to AEW. No, oh, he's too much of a problem. Sasha Banks is not. You take her. It's like uh, I'll give you I'll give you, have... I'll give you fifteen other WWE superstars, new and old, but I'm not giving you CM Punk. Yeah, I bet you that's probably why he did it too. I bet you. Well, he's got so, Sasha Banks what, back. Yeah, though it once again raises the question of why not just make it a triple threat match for Extreme Rules in the end. I you would say that triple threat, not, or I say Smack uh, on an episode of SmackDown. It could be the very during, draft episode. They might announce it later this week. They might announce it tonight. Because uh, the draft, the draft is this game? week. It starts Friday. That's uh, you heard it here, folks. That's going to be the only reason why I watch. It's because of the draft picks. That we're going to talk it. a little bit about that too. Uh, also, right? also, funny thing. You want to know what Adam Cole said? What was the hardest thing about leaving WWE was being oh, part of uh, up, up, down, down the party. Yeah, up, up, down. when he's saying like. I can't hang out with my buddies anymore to play video games because the company is a tyrannical overlord. What right, was you got with our every day had a group thing again. If y'all if y'all don't listen to oral sessions, you seriously need to. Oh, I, I do. Avid watcher. That's, that, that's <laughs> okay. like my top five uh, podcast right there. Right, go ahead, Eric. I bet. All right, uh, I gotta get going now. My break's oh. over, so I'm gonna head back now. All I'll right. see you all next time. <laughs> Definitely. I love this. Good Eric, take care. Voice. We'll definitely uh, Zoom with you on Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, the newsman himself, the inquirer, wholesome gentleman, at the entertainment, Eric Brown. Eric, take care. You too, tip man. Take care, everyone. All right. Take care, man. God bless right. you, brother. Bye-bye. Right. That was a well, that was a nice impromptu uh news reel. We're definitely gonna start doing that more often. From out of nowhere. How's that for out of nowhere? Again, no script. Anything can be said possibly here. He gave us a lot of discussion <laughs> points, though, to think about and talk about, too. But going back to uh, before the uh, newsman came on the reel, I apologize, Casey. Your thoughts on AEW Grand Slam League. What is one of your big takeaways, match, performance, story-wise, Rampage, or Dynamite 2? Give me some thoughts from you. All right. All I right. Touch up on, <laughs> on this match, <laughs> I want to touch up on AEW Woman's title match between oh. Dr. Brett Baker D M D Don't forget it. Versus Ruby Soho. What I seen from that match was it was a great back and forth match between Dr. Brett Baker, DMD, and Ruby Soho for the AEW Women's title. And Ruby Soho, as much as it was awesome seeing her getting getting an opportunity for the AEW Women's title, as much 
as I like her as a wrestler, I mean, it. she's still, it's too early to give Ruby Soho the AEW Women's title in AEW. And because at that time, at the time last week, it was way too early for Ruby Soho to get the title. But Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, when you get down to it, she is not losing that AEW Women's title anytime soon unless they have the right woman to beat her for AEW Women's title. And I think the very, I think a good candidate and very valuable candidate. Oops, oops, I'm going with MJF. MJF's old gimmick there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> And Don't go there. Don't go there. There, it's Thunder Rosa. I think oh. will be a great challenger for the AEW Women's Title versus Doctor Britt Baker DMD. I mean, there's a couple women that are great challengers out there for Britt Baker's DMD title, Doctor Britt Baker title, and there. I mean, we got. Kai Conti, Thunder Rosa, the former champ, Hikaru Shida, Chris Statlander. I mean, there's many, and Ruby Soho included. I mean, there's many of great woman, women out there in AEW for the, at the challenge for the AEW Women's title. But here is one marquee match I want to see take place. Even though we know their best friends in real life, and good friends in real life, I want to see the virtuosa Diana Perazzo. Long may she reign. As long may she reign versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, at Found for Glory, <laughs> Vegas. Okay, I see what you're trying to do there. That could be, that will be Deanna Frazzo's toughest challenge to date, even though she's got her hands full with Mickey James right now. Yeah, I'm about to say. Wrestling, with Impact Wrestling, but I want to see, but damn it, give me Dr. Britt Baker, DMD versus Deanna Frazzo anywhere. Any place, any arena, since it's the forbidden door. I don't give a damn if it takes place on AEW grounds, Impact grounds, Ring of Honor grounds, NWA grounds. Shit. Just give me that damn match. <laughs> it, that's going to be an instant classic through and through. Because those two women have a never back down state never say quit attitude and that's what I admire for both of them and Ruby Soho here's one match I like to see Ruby Soho versus Chris Statlander that'd be interesting in AEW and there's plenty of good matches to the forbidden door for a lot of Women that can take place in Forbidden Door. I mean, and here's one. And give me two women sign the AEW, two new roster members of the AEW Women's Division. Give me Kylie, Kylan King, the AEW, and Killer Kelly. Yes! To, a, to AEW as well. I mean, even though the men's division is about to be stacked with Bray Wyatt coming in at, at AEW and all this, but man, imagine Kevin Steen coming in to All Elite Wrestling because Kevin Steen, I watched his tapes, old tapes with Ring of Honor. Ooh, he is ice cold on that microphone. And can you imagine no the, filter? Pro, can you imagine the promo battles back and forth for Kevin Steen and MJF on the microphone? <laughs> oh, that ring, that ring would be burning up. 
because it would be lot. I mean, it would be nuclear bombs thrown at at, at each other <laughs> back and forth. Small and big on the mic, and Kevin if Kevin Steen goes AEW, Bray Wyatt AEW, and Sammy Zayn AEW to the men. I say lay off the men's signings for a while. Most start definitely. Focusing, start focusing on building your woman's division from the ground up in AEW. And I say how to get that, that started is bringing two members of Kylan, Kylie King, Killer Kelly to AEW. And if there's any women, women released from WWE, and they're like free agents. I mean, they'd be good, good for the AEW woman's division. I mean, if something happens with DK and she never... There it is. I was waiting for that. I knew it was going to go never, there. <laughs> and she never... I mean, even though I want DK to succeed on Raw or SmackDown, but if they don't have her succeed and something happens to her and they let her go, I'd say DK would be a perfect fit to AEW under her old old ring name Edie, like she was on the Indies many years ago. And I say there's a perfect opportunity to reunite Slap Happy, the tag team in AEW with Edie and Ruby Soho. Man. And I say there's, I mean, there's plenty of good tag matches that take place. Anna Jay and Ty Conti versus Ruby Soho and E and AEW. And plus, that AEW's women's division be stacked. And I would, I'm definitely all elite with AEW. But damn it, if something happens to DK with WWE, Give me her to AEW, please. That's all I'm asking. Please <laughs> give me DK to AEW. That's all I got to say. I really like that a lot. I like, first off, how you focused on the women's side of face professional wrestling, but also how you looked at the aspect of the bit door and its effect that it could have on it, too. Uh, first off, yes, we saw on Dr. Rebecca DMD, the history going back to pretty much day one when Ruby's helped Brett break into the industry. I thought it was a very good match with the spot they were given. I felt the women definitely deserved that spot because in my opinion, one of the biggest criticisms among all pro wrestling fans has been the women's division of AEW. But honestly, since Dada Baker DMD got the title, I've only felt like the women's division has flourished more, been showcased more, and been represented better. And with add-ons now, like Ruby Soho and her veteranism, I and mean, kind of get with the Nightmare family helping further enhance female talent through AW Dark at the All Elite Zone. Fucking love that, by the way. Uh, I absolutely right. do love that. And I would like to see kind of King Bar as a mainstream part of the Dynamite. But with all these subdivision feuds going on with Thunder Rosa and Jay Cargo and Nana Rose basically at a fallout point, it seems, with this tag feud with Ty J and Penelope Ford and the Bunny. Yeah, Ali. Uh, with uh, oh. also <laughs> Dr. Britt Baker. Shut up. With also Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. I figured about her next opponent and then my contenders in Chris Stetlander now being kind of, you know, buddy, buddy, it seems now with uh, Ty J and the best friend going up against HFO. There's more parts moving about in this women's division. As far as Killer Kelly goes, holy shit, did she get a shiner again in that match? All that over the weekend. She oh, is my. a bad oh. ass. That Killer is, is might I add ass. again, the first ever women's WXW champion. That is the female representation of Ring Comp. That is a fighter. That is a fucking professional wrestler. Damn, it's glad to see her back in action in the States. Yes, I Googled her matches. Damn I right. have to watch them. And I would love to see her back involved in Impact Wrestling or finally be involved in even just enhanced matches to see what she really can bring. I want to see her go up against Hikaru Shida. There, I said it. Uh, and, I, and I do like the fact you do bring up the idea of bringing back maybe an old school tag team again. They've only had one women's invitational cup in AEW and it defined literally AEW's favorite tag team to date. Ana Jay and Ty Conti and two of the brightest, might I add, youngest organically made wrestling highlights 
of professional wrestling today in all eight wrestling. They're two of the tops, period. And they're in their prime. Anna Jay, literally not even two years in a professional wrestling career. Congratulations to her, Queen Slayer. So I do love the fact that you brought up that aspect and the fact that took everything of Dr. Baker's pocket and her entire entourage just to put Ruby down into position for the lockdown. I think did not hurt Ruby Soho in defeat. If anything else, it truly showed how far Dr. Baker is willing to go to be the champion, how she has grown as a character, but also how she's grown in ring because, again, she is a tremendous wrestler, and she carries that with her every day. That's why she's the freaking champion. Ruby Soho is there to test herself against the best and prove why she is a professional wrestler and doing it her own way on her own in her own life. And this was a perfect start to her AEW uh, career at a high point. I can't wait to see who she feels with uh, next. And as far as Dr. Baker's next title match, Wanda Rosa is number one. Wanda Rosa and Dr. Baker are technically one and one, even though one of those wins never counted against their win-loss record. So I definitely do see that match coming up. Now, whether or not Wanda Rosa is the one to be the next AEW Women's World Champion, only time will tell. You saw how long it took Dr. Britt Baker. And again, people picked her as the champion since day one. But it went through Nyla Rose. It went through Riho, not in that order. And Hikaru Shida, who held it for a year, I might add. And when it comes to the presentation, the identity, and the integrity of the championships in AEW, they aren't Velcro, cheap-ass props, and paper champions that can be squashed in eight seconds. They literally are champions that elevate the division that they own. Men, tag, women, you name it. I'll even say that for the TNT title because each champion defines it a different way. As, of course, we have a big match coming up. We'll talk more about that later. But I do love that. Now, as far as my thoughts for Grand Slam League, I will say this. Rampage, Grand Slam, both two hours. Both had their own identities. Both had their own flows. Both were incredible showcases of professional wrestling. But when I think about the two shows, which one did I enjoy more? Got to be honest. I enjoyed Rampage more because after the Kenny Omega Brown dance and match, it almost felt like there was a bit of a lull on Grand Slam. No uh, fault of anybody that was on the show that night, but you could tell, especially when Brian Pillman Jr. and MJF were out there, I expected more from this match. And I kind of felt like it was like, you know, they got shafted because of their spot. The biggest thing that happened outside of Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega and then uh, the main event being Dr. Baker DMD and Ruby Soho, I would say it's definitely what happened with Malachi Black and Cody. Mm -hmm. As we saw, Cody is back, but the nightmare soon as you alluded to, King, and this is the point I'm bringing up with, disintegrating Melty, maybe being rebranded out of the fires of something, like rising like a phoenix or falling in the fires, as the House of Black claimed Cody uh, again, and Cody was the ultimate enemy here, booed out the building. And it was the emotions that got the best of him after the ref impromptu bump allowed Black to use literally a Black Mist and got a win. Two and oh now against Cody. And Cody right now, he is on the downside. The biggest difference here right now is how is Arn and him basically going to bounce back from this? And with Brandy back in his corner, is he further falling to that dark side? Dark side dark side of professional wrestling. Is he going heel? That being said, though, I'm very curious where this Malachi Black story goes. And by the way, spoiler alert, shout out to Brody King and Malachi Black, the new PWG tag team champions. Holy hell. <laughs> Just wait until Brody King shows up in AEW. I might as well call Brody King a member of the uh, House of Black. Uh, other highlights I'd like to uh, think about here, people who know, where the hell do you stand? And is Stu Grayson just trying to counsel you? Or is the two original members of Dark Order not fine? Because Dark Order is still not fully fine. Like, Ty J finally brought back most of them together. As example, on Elevation tonight, the original two of the Dark Order, it still seems like they're in a different light. So I'm very curious how much further this Dark Order storyline goes since, you know, the Eva Uno's decision on Heyman Page's wishes and how it affected the Dark Order in the first place. Damn, those for tonight, they definitely uh, own the show. And I would be wrong not to highlight this for you, King. The Super Click taking on Jurassic Express and Kirsten Cage. They have not lost a single damn step. That was a phenomenal six-man tag on Rampage. And the way that they isolated Luchasaurus and somehow Adam Cole, baby got off the Panama Sunrise. They pulled the BTE trigger and now not no longer called the last shot, but boom, literally Adam Cole picking up the uh, victory. I thought it was a very tremendous match. 
The super click is back, baby. Who can stop them? Only time will tell. And then it makes me wonder one more thing. When you think about AW, talk about other titles. Are we finally going to get AEW Trios Championships? And if I was to ask you things for the first chance, I'm pretty sure I know what King would say. That being said, the only uh, other thing I really got to take away from uh, AEW Grand Slam Week, everybody performed to the highest. It was an incredibly fun time as professional wrestling fan, top to bottom, even with the man of the year and the American top team fan, which probably was the lowest lull of the entire uh, four hours professional uh, wrestling. Just saying, but Jericho trying, you know, bring more eyes, bring a different audience. In case you being an MMA fan, you would definitely correlate to this, to professional wrestling to AEW, why AEW tries to include everybody and everything and get the shine to anyone or everyone. And that's really what professional wrestling here in AEW is all about. Team effort to put forward the sport of professional wrestling. But Grand Slam definitely knocked it out of the park. I loved all uh, four hours. Now. All I got is this. Well, before you go on, go AEW on. runs the city. There, I said it. Damn. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Straight exactly. from the king himself. Well, I mean, CM Punk's have been a long time since professional wrestling came back to New York City. Gee, I wonder what he meant by that. <sighs> by the way, Fuego Del So, talk about some frequent flyer miles off that field. <laughs> 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 Holy he hell. He went, he went over it. Oh, my he went God. Fly, he went flying Fuego Del So. Went flying like, like Nero he, was launching him like a human airplane. <laughs> so, and that brought Sammy Guevara to say, you know what? You want to mess around my best friend? Let me go after that TNT title of yours in, on Wednesday in Rochester as God's favorite champion meets the Spanish God. And I expect that to be a one heck of a good match between these two. Now, where it comes down to it was me. I don't know if Miro should, I don't know if Sammy should take the title off of him. This is where I feel split. You tell. Because, like, Sammy is right on this momentum. You know, we haven't seen the inner circle, but yet you can still see that, you know, you know, you still got members of the inner circle, but it's like they're doing their own thing. Correct. Jericho and Hager doing their own thing. Santana and Ortiz doing their own thing. And then Sammy's doing his own thing with Fuego. But it's also Miro, <clears throat> Miro is on the biggest white hot momentum ever ever since he's had that TNT title around his waist. Yep. This is why I feel very split 50-50. Do you take the title off of Miro now and give it to Sammy and let him run with it? Or you let Miro continue this momentum? Either way, I'm okay with it. It's just that I feel split. Because I like both of these gentlemen. I like both of these men. I like their work and what they've been doing. I mean, especially Sammy. I mean, every like especially that blood and guts match where he was like basically the star of that uh, match, no pun intended. <laughs> so, I mean, but I just felt split by it. I think that's a very relatable um, thought because, again, in AEW, you truly don't see matches being one-sided all the time. And Miro and Simi Guevara are prime examples of it. Miro, of course, like you said, undefeated in singles action, current TNT champion, has not reached the successful number of defenses as far as Darby Allen, but wants to and wants to even surpass that. While Simi Guevara, he has been a standout literally since episode one, day one, competing in the very first match in AEW Dynamite history against Cody. And again, it was Sammy Guevara first brought into the inner circle by Chris Jericho. And as far as the inner circle goes, inner circle is basically for life. While they aren't together, it is Tony Khan, like he said, you don't need to disband to break the brand. The band can do their own things. You still can be that band. That's why the inner circle is still the way it is. And I do like the fight you did bring up because I do want to highlight one more thing from Rampage. Lucha Brothers versus Proud and Powerful. Book that match for full gear. Proud and Powerful, in my opinion, are future yeah. tag team champions. What yeah. a wild eight-man tag that was. <clears throat> but that was a fun eight-man tag. I, I, I do get what you're saying. And again, we'll have to see if uh, God's favorite champion, encouraged by his God and his wife every night, <laughs> always giving the rub to his wife <laughs> and bed. Pro promo so good. So good. <laughs> They're just subtle. <laughs> it's short and simple. And it always comes down to the fact, this is the words of the Redeemer. I, I love this Redeemer character with me. 
<laughs> Freaking hilarious. But went from but, the but, bed. Yeah. And- <laughs> All right. Uh, before we talk about uh, other things that are wrestling, Casey, um, like I said, I brought up the MMA stuff. People have had mixed feelings about the American Top Team and the Dan Lambert situation. But as an MMA fan, I want to get your take quickly on that. And if you want to add anything else regarding to what I just like summed up in my part to Grand Slam Week before I move on, uh, you can as well. But first, give me your thoughts on the top team thing. And if you have any further thoughts of AEW so far, feel free to. I give you the floor. All right. The American top team with Dan Lambert, Jorge Masvidal, Junior Dos Santos, Andre Arlovsky, Aid Van Zant, Austin Vandervert, ex husband of Paige Van Zant. And when you get down to it though, the American top team in AEW, I mean they play good ass heel characters when you get down to it, because you need that top arrogant asshole heel characters in AEW. I mean, MJF, we know he holds that position. And no one's going to talk about that. The ultimate asshole. Nobody. The ultimate asshole of the industry, but continue. Nobody. And when you get down to it, though, all you can see is what everybody should know is Junior Del Santos being with the American Top Team is every wrestler should know this. Junior Del Santos has a glass chin and a glass jaw. Ah. He's not the same fighter like he was in his day. Yep. Junior Del yeah. Santos and Velasquez beat the shit out of him and turned this chip face into a cheese grater and that UFC heavyweight title fight. Damn. And the American top team when you get down to it, I say for AEW is if the inner circle is going to continue to feud with the American top team, I, I say bring some backup in King Velazquez on the Amer- on the inner circles side, and therefore J- Junior Dos Santos' face would be like he just <laughs> seen a ghost, and don't realize that Cain Velazquez was the man that ended Junior Dos Santos' MMA career, and Jorge Maxwell, I say he's Absolutely welcome AEW as a guest and all this. And I mean, he lost, he recently lost a fight with Kamar Usman when Kamar Usman knocked him out in that fight. And I highlighted that. But but I totally love that Jorge Masvidal reacted the flying knee spot. (laughs) That was a wild knee, though. That That was Jericho. Out the, Damn. The fight with Ben, ben Askren and, and Jorge Masvidal. I mean, he held off on it and he used his thigh area as to be very careful to not hurt Chris Jericho with that stiff knee to the face because Jericho, he's never been punched stiff before. I mean, I'm sure he has though, but in all this. Right. And I listened to an interview with Dana White the other day. They asked him what he thought about American Top Team being an AEW since Dana White knows Dan Lambert pretty well. And he thinks he has nothing wrong with the American Top Team being an AEW. Because Dana did say that he is friends, great friends with Tony Khan and his father. She con, she con, and Dana. I mean, with the that's all Dana White said. He said if they're going to do that angle, and good for them. That's all like he had to say on that. And uh-huh. with American Top Team being an AEW occasionally, I mean, you can't have them being overexposed. 
like that because Dan Lambert, I mean, it could get annoying when they're on all the time. I mean, have Dan Lambert on very limitedly, but not all the time because Dan Lambert, don't get me wrong, the guy has, and to quote Chris Jericho on this, I'm a fat face dipshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a pleasurable face. I'm and, just waiting for him to get punched. And Dan, the end game. And Dan Lambert, Dan Lambert, though, one of these days, he's going to get super kicked right in the mouth, or he's going to get punched right in the mouth. And please let Paul White or Paul White hit <laughs> the knockout punch on Dan Lambert. Oh. <laughs> Or hell, or hell, bring a Mike Tyson and let Mike Tyson. That's what I was thinking right. about when you said back up. That's what I was thinking about honorary member of the inner circle. That's, that's the Mike, you know, That's the end game. Got to be Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson and Cain Velasquez. Since Velasquez is a free agent, I say bring them both as part of the inner circle. So Cain okay. okay. Velasquez can take. To take care of Junior, Mike Tyson with all the other ones. And Mike Tyson, I would love to see him hit Dan Lambert right in the face with that right hand. Down with that Lambert. right hand. The place goes Dan crazy. will not get up for about, I'd say, 20 minutes. Well, he probably would need exactly. all the, the top team and the man of the year to pick him up after that. But I, I do like that you bring that up because, again, yeah. we know what the end game is here. But I will say this. Yeah. I see this. American top team exposure going better than the run in Impact Wrestling. That's all I got to say about that. Right. I feel like they was going to treat this better. But you talk about uh, Mike Tyson being equalizer. You talk about the men. Who's the equalizer against Paige Savant? Paige Van Zandt. Mm. Oh, my apologies. Botch. <laughs> Didn't know her last mm. name. Yeah, think about that. Remember, she was there too, and she wasn't this year talking. She's got a hell of a bare knuckle okay. pairing against I her. Got, I, I got it. I think I got it. Go ahead. Send her up. <clears throat> Actually, um, ain't she doing ain't, ain't she doing MMA too? This person I'm talking about is Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa has experience in MMA. Yep, Thunder Rosa She'd has experience perfect. in MMA. She's so perfect for Paige Van That's how I see it. So I, I'm just going yeah. off a tangent here with Thunder Rosa feuding, it seems like right now, I feel inevitably with Jay Cargill oh. and oh. Uh, Nyla Rose. It wouldn't surprise me if oh. Thunder Rosa is the first person to hand Jay Cargill her first loss. But oh. I think about another person that Chris Jericho brought in the AEW. Think about this, guys. Sleeper pick. She's a yeah, shooter. Yeah. Legit Layla Hirsch. There Layla it is. Hirsch. That was my second and, pick. And not a one. Not a, not a third pick of mine. Ty Conti. Ty Conti? Ty Conti. That's right. Brazilian Jew. Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Brazilians. Brazilian fighters are Jiu -jitsu. very fucking tough people when you get down to it. Oh, and so are I'm Russian aware. fighters. I Russian saw fighters. that pump kick Ty Conti delivers firsthand. Damn. Russian <laughs> fighters. Russian fighters are very tough too. Oh, yeah. get down to it. That's all different. And I was watching off topic here for a sec, but I was watching okay. UFC 266 this past Saturday day night. Brian Ortega and Alexander or Volkanovski main eventing for the UFC featherweight title. If you gentlemen get a chance, please watch that main event fight from that night. That is the greatest MMA fight that I have ever seen in my entire life. You are going to go crazy in that fight. Greatest fight ever. And I watched another fight for a flyweight woman's title between Valentina Shevchenko and Lauren Murphy. And Valentina Shevchenko, she is so impressive. She throws a punch and a kick within a second. That is like how fast she is. She's like in and out, in and out, 
I mean, she's like so fast. It's unbelievable. I feel like, I I feel like the match waiting to happen is Valentina versus Amanda Nunes because literally both women hold two belts. Yes, listen, yes. Listen, oh. listen to this. Listen to this. Valentina Shevchenko, when she fought Amanda Nunes, she fucking beat the shit out of Amanda Nunes that, that night. And Valentina, she flat out like won that fight single handedly versus nice. Amanda Nunes. And Amanda Nunes has never been taken, has never been that dominated by Valentina Shevchenko like that. And Valentina. That, that's a fight that's waiting to happen. And my father, like he said this, he said he wants to see Amanda Nunes versus Valentina Shevchenko in a flyweight division. I say flyweight, I say make that a flyweight belt, flyweight belt, no titles on a line whatsoever. It's just right. a marquee fight just waiting to happen right there. And yeah, because uh, again, I, I have limited um, UFC uh, experience, as you know. I mean, we watched Invicta together when it was on uh, Axe TV, and uh, we know obviously one person that's there at the current uh, featherweight chairman, I believe she is. I might be scrubbing vision. Right. Granny with Deanna Perrazzo, literally in MMA, as Deanna Perrazzo is literally doing what Taikanji is doing, disciplining herself in different right. arts to be that better of an right. athlete. Long may she reign, right. the Vince Wilson, no right. limit, current double tra- champion. But, but, gentlemen, but, but as far as the USC goes, yeah, Valentina definitely, uh, and Amanda Nunes, that's the match I want to see. Yeah, but gentlemen, when y'all get a chance, please watch the Alexander Volkanovsky and Brian Ortega fight for UFC. I will. Like, featherweight title. Ooh, that is an instant classic. I will, I promise. So... With that being said, I love you guys' takes on this whole American uh, top team thing. And again, Jericho retweeted my tweet. So we'll have to wait and see. Jericho understands what to do to not only push professional wrestling, but clearly bring an eye to professional wrestling through other audiences. That's why he's feuding with these people in the first place, okay? There's a reason why Chris Jericho has been going, has been going on for 30 years plus, people. Uh, key of innovation. That being said, there is one other thing I did forget to talk about, and it kind of goes into our next topic as I talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling. What's y'all's thoughts on that Lights Out match and the friendly reunion? Oh, oh, oh. I knew oh, it. Oh, man. I Go knew ahead. it when we watched on Friday on Rampage Grand Slam. Oh, my God. These dudes, these four men basically went to town on each other. But they came it in the end. It, oh my god! Carnage, chaos, destruction—you name it, they did that. <laughs> and now, as was announced over the weekend, breaking news from King himself in October at the 23, 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, we will see this on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong on Fight TV in a Philadelphia street fight between Minoru Suzuki. Lance Archer representing Suzuki Goon and AD Kingston making his new Japan pro wrestling debut along with Moxley. The Deaf Rider and his drinking buddy together in New Japan pro wrestling. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn. On NJPW Perk. Yeah. Kingston <laughs> is just whacking that track. I could not, I could not stop watching <laughs> that scene enough. That was so. Damn, hilarious. Kingston just went crazy. <laughs> on Lance Archer in that trash can. At one point, I didn't know what he was doing. We could just... <laughs> just <laughs> <going straight>. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky Starr's absolute... I thought Lance Archer was about to give, uh, give a little drum, little drum set there. Like, boom, boom, boom. I... <laughs> I love that. Uh... I love that so much. What an ending <laughs> sequence. That was so the hell funny. man was that trash. That was so damn funny. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. That was too damn funny. Just <laughs> bring <laughs> oh, projection oh, no. ass. They relived that in October for the Philadelphia Street fight. That spot might get revisited. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, like, he didn't do the freaking... 
He didn't do no finisher. He just beat the hell out of him. He's in a trash can and fighting <laughs> through the stick near the end of the audience. <laughs> Pinned the man. But hey, Lance Archer, he took a hell of a beating and a swinging. Uh, and a vibrating. Jesus. And of course, Miro Suzuki and John Moss are just fighting on the outside. Yeah, so the man, no, no fighting on the outside. Like, <laughs> like they get the. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to watch that clip again after this. Just freaking with a hammer. Uh, but homicide. Homicide of all people. 5150. Oh, God. Legend. God, speaking of homicide, oh. being homicide, I can remember homicide and Hernandez in a tag team called LAX like yesterday. Impact Wrestling. I saw a picture oh, yes, of your weapon. freaking Conan, Homicide, and, 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 and freaking Hernandez and, and Diamante together. With what you got though in the AEW with kind of powerful Diamante, how the hell is she not signed? That's another name to figure about too, gentlemen. Uh, freaking yes, uh, Homicide now. Literally, Conan mm-hmm. could recreate an LAX in AEW. <laughs> He can bring back the official name part of the, you know, since, you know, everybody's part of the forbidden door. Bring back the name. Bring back the name. I mean, basically, have LAX take over AEW, Impact, and since Conan doing MLW stuff, have them take over MLW as well. MLW, of course, stand up their own women's division, too. About damn time. Congratulations. I look very forward to uh, watching that. And again, Roxy, let's see what you continue to bring as the first in this new era for Women of Honor uh, as Women of Honor champion. And, of course, Camille, well, she basically told uh, Melina how she uh, feels about her. Yeah. Beat the holy crap. Yeah, I sure did. She's like, we got a match coming between those two, maybe for the tile, but Camille, the Brick House, represent the NWA proudly and the Burke. What a champion. I love what's what going you? on in women's wrestling across the entire industry. And as you alluded to earlier, we got Deanna Perrazzo taking on her toughest challenge to date and former knockouts champion. Mickey J. Hardcore. I'm going to go <laughs> hardcore. And let's not forget, gentlemen. Oh, shout out to Stardom, by the way. So much women's wrestling. Congratulations to the winner of the five star Grand Prix. I'd still say that Utami is my favorite all time Stardom professional wrestler delivering that classic and still holding probably that red belt. Whether or not she falls, finally loses it, I'll have to wait and see. And of course, Momo Tama is one of my all time favorites, of course, representing Kota Abushi. And I've always been a Queen's Quest fan. That's why I was so happy to see Jamie Hayter live. Hashtag I'm a hater. Hi, Indigo. Uh, that, that being said, <laughs> I, 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 I had to put it out there. Uh, that, that being said, again, there's so much positivity going on in women's professional uh, wrestling and so much outlook. I truly do hope to see more of that forbidden door, uh, like you said. And uh, speaking of Minoru Suzuki, who's out here in America just to, uh, you know, do his shit professional wrestling he's faced Jonathan Gresham he's now gonna face freaking Nick Gage he's gonna he faced freaking homicide in a freaking near five-star classic the man can do no wrong the man is fucking professional uh wrestling and I certainly hope this is not the last time we see of him in Vomit AEW and I'm gonna say it right now I want Eddie Kingston versus Minoru Suzuki one on one book that for full year all right. Murder Grandpa, as we call him in the IWC, ladies and gentlemen. Murder Grandpa. Well, I mean, Ty <laughs> Conti, of course, says proud grandpa. Ty Conti definitely exhibits that strong style for sure. Again, Ty Conti, one of the brightest up and coming uh, wrestlers as well. There's just so much to be happy about and be joyful in professional wrestling. You gotta freaking love it. And I love the fact that Allison K and Marty Bell are the tag team champions of NWA and DK owns Impact uh, Wrestling. Uh, that being said, can- what's up? I'm glad you touched on that. Bullet Club take over. Phantasmo is back. Hikileo and Chris May, we about to take over him back. <laughs> All he needs is one shot. The finesse club getting bigger and bigger. But also, in other things, wrestling, so is the United Empire. Aussie Open and Rep Pro and TJP? Yes. Yeah, that TJP one shocked me right there. Represented from one of the original classes of the LA dojo, trained under Katsuya Shibata himself. Holy hell! Speaking of the uh, United Empire, this kind of segues into my next topic. As you know, what I'm wearing here, we kind of slowly alluded to. Let's talk a little bit about New Japan Pro Wrestling because, of course, 
going on there is the professional wrestling tournament every year, the G1 Climax 31, where we see who will be Max the Max. Now, I don't know how much you all have watched it or how much you all might have like a winner or a pony, as some call it, and either blocker in this whole thing. But you see what two shirts I have in front of me. And so far, that's still my favorite match in this G1 because I thought literally Ishii and Shingo were going to kill each other. That being said, Ishii is the MVP. But after what I saw today, he owns victory over Shingo Takagi. He took Tetsuya Naito out of it. And he just beat Kota Ibushi, spoiler alert, folks, via submission. I don't know about you guys, but right now, I think it's safe to say picking Zack Sabre Jr. as your winner in this year's G1 I think would not be too far. And we heard that Xavier Jr. wants to challenge one particular wrestler in the Forbidden Door at some point. And it's not John Moxley, though we want that match too. Nope. He wants the American Dragon. That being said, I want to hear you guys' thoughts so far on the G1. What's been your favorite match and who's your winner of either a block, what you think your finals might be, or do you think you have your winner figured out for the G1? Go ahead and talk about G1, guys. Uh, the G1 has been really good. I mean, mm, Naito, like I said, Naito, speedy recovery to you, sir. After what happened, Scott, you know, speedy recovery to you. Tranquilo, whatever. Um, Shingo and Ishii killed it. My God, what a match. Ishii's been killing it this whole year. Not going to lie. He's been killing it this whole year. Um... Zack Sabre and Jr. and Ibushi in a 20-minute classic. That one was good. You gave him, give him five. You should have given him five more. Give him five more, and I would have been okay with it, too. Kota because I didn't... submission, dude. He trapped every limb. I know. <laughs> but I'm saying, could have let that. Just before, they could have let another five more men stand put the submission on him. Five, <laughs> five more. They want the match hit. But oh, at this rate, like you said, you know what? It ain't too far off to put ZSJ as your winner of the G1. It ain't that far off. So I might have to go with ZSJ as my winner of the G1. Give it to him. And also, Brian Danielson, ZSJ, um, since Tony Khan wants to bring the AEW UK in 2022, let's make it happen. And if it's a pay-per-view, I'm okay with it. If it's a Dynamite Rampage, I'm okay with that too. But since you're bringing AEW to the UK in 2022, let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. And also, breaking news, as um, I think y'all saw in the ATW group chat, um, you know, uh, me and Casey follow, you know, JD from NY206. He is also a House of Glory commentator. Shout out to you. Uh, what he posted on the as the main event as their, as House of Glory returns back to business is the Amazing Red versus – Will Osprey. We have not November. seen those two go one on one since that Super J Cup match where we thought that was it for these two to ever meet each other ever again. And now look at this light. <laughs> November 12th, folks. I'm most likely going to watch for that match alone. Yeah. Again, I, again, I watch so many things, but I can't keep up with all of it, so I Google what I can and uh, pray for what I can uh, later. But I am yeah. definitely going to watch that, of course, with Bound for Glory. And, of course, this Saturday, I will watch the Knockouts Knockdown as we see who is yeah. honored, as we honor the past, the present, and look towards the future. And it will be so great to hear Beta Scott on commentary, too, because when it comes to women's personal wrestling, you need that female perspective truly to encompass it and give you an understanding of it. Veda, Veda Scott personifies that to me. And then Mercedes Martinez, part of that knockdowns event as well. Yes. And she is a 20 year plus veteran of the game. Uh, that being said, it's a sub 10, but that's what we do. Uh, Casey, your thoughts on the uh, G1 climax. I mean, d bloody dangerous techers are owning both blocks right now, Ty D and Zach Sabre Jr., but also is the United Empire. Jeff Cobb and Great O'Connor respectively. Great O'Con, a block leader, but the next match I feel like could truly decide who wins the block. It's Great O'Con versus Zack Sabre Jr. So with that being said, give me your thoughts towards the G1. Do you have your winner figured out yet, especially with Okada being back to true Rainmaker? The G1 climax. Now. Dakota Bushi. Okada. And many of others that are yes. Saxy Bray Jr. Saxy Bray that's in the tournament. 
brain. You get down to it, though. I mean, I can't pick a winner for this G1 Climax because all of them, this could be anybody's ball game set in this tournament here, G1 Climax. Yeah, Sexy I guess this is still Bray, too. <laughs> Sexy Bray, Kuda Oboshi, and many of others that are in this tournament. And remember one thing, Sexy Bray did say that I want the American Dragon. He wants to face Brian Danielson. That's technical. No matter where it's at. Oh. It doesn't matter if it's a New Japan grounds, AW grounds. I mean, it could be anywhere in the prof professional wrestling ground because this is the forbidden door after all. And with G1 Climax, I mean, could be anybody's ball game like here. And right. if I had to pick a winner here, I, my two choices are going to be Kota Obushi or Saxy Bray. So are my two that I have winning the G1 Climax. Okay. Well, the thing about Zack Sabre Jr. is right now, he literally has submitted everybody he's been in the ring with. He literally has won each <laughs> submission. This gives me shades of when he literally just stopped out everybody in the New Japan Cup and nearly beat Okada at Sakura Genesis for the title. This time, though, he's already beaten the IWGP Rebel Champion, Shigeru Takagi, via submission. And this was a match he was willing to do and a result he was willing to make over 12 years. Now, Zack Sabre Jr. faces the one guy in his G1 debut that owns the block right now, undefeated against everybody, with the two additional points leading it. Rental Khan. And you figure out these sleeper right. picks right now. Yeah, the dominator, Illuminati the Empire. And then you figure about the other side of the block right now, Jeff Cobb right now. He literally is only in that block by himself with Kasuchika Okada, who literally brought back the one true Raymaker. About damn time. Uh, that About being said, yeah, I said it's about time he brought it back. Yeah, the, clearly he's not been the same since losing the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Yes, supposed to what it used to be called RIP to the greatest professional wrestling title of all time. There, I said it. Uh, yeah. Again, I missed the. Why was why has Tomori he never won? Why did you have the virgin and then all of a sudden become the World Heavyweight Championship? That still boggles my mind. I like, don't why? know. Kota Bushi's vision for legacy and evolution. Here we are now. And this title almost has been a curse. When you think about who held the title, Kota Bushi broke under the pressure. Well, Osprey won it. Well, Osprey broke his damn neck. What did they do? Don't, no, no, dude. Don't jinx Shingo. Yeah, I know, but that's what they keep saying. And right now, you heard Chris Charlton when it comes to there's a reason why the IWGP champion has not won the G1 and controlled their own destiny. It's either the pressure they put on themselves as the target or the pressure they put on themselves to succeed as the target to be a victor. No one's there yet. Okada came to close it. Sonata broke that when Okada's run. So, yeah, like I said, uh, this G1, holy freaking hell. Okada, right. Jeff Cobb, Great Khan, Taiji, Zack Sabre Jr., and Casey would not rule anybody out. Logic makes sense. Kota Ibushi trying to make history being, I think he would be the That's only right. guy ever if he did this. The first person to win three consecutive G1s in a row. Yep, he brought that on that, yeah. um, that, they, uh, that they posted, uh, week, uh, I think it was a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, Kota Ibushi yeah. said that. And, and, then I, and then I look at the, re the rest of the participants here and freaking Donald Cobb, my insanity! I hate that! <laughs> I, I saw the interview, I was like, why is John going win this? Why? 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 I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I, 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 no. No, 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 wins D1. If y'all don't win the G1, I will have a heart attack. It, it's, been nice, it's, been nice knowing, it's been nice knowing you, King. You'll never see me on ATW again if y'all don't win. Uh, that being said, 
K- Casey, what are you about to say? What are you about to say, Casey? All right. All right. Even though y'all don't want Yano and I don't want Yano, but I'm going to make a bet here. Oh, no. If Yano wins the G1 blind match and King, no. you got to eat no. just away. You got to eat just away if Yano wins. Oh, oh. <laughs> You know I don't want to explain, dude. Why you Wait, gotta put? Time out! I didn't know that's <laughs> king. You never had Chick Fil A. I have. I just don't like it. Not a big fan. Interesting. I just learned something new tonight. But regardless, forget that. Uh, okay. No. No. Okay. no. You, you know what? You, will you know break what? Me. You know what? I'll accept that bet. Oh, and I will post it in the group chat. If Yano wins the G1, you will see a picture of me, and I will send it in the group chat of me chick- eating Chick-fil-A. You got a deal. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, King, you're a bold man, but at least there's no money on the line. <laughs> Just, uh, you're a but, uh, oh, God. Don't let Yano win. Gretel Khan broke the Yano. Other people, break the Yano. <laughs> break the Yano. <laughs> Oh God! Please, <laughs> oh, my name to him. No. Here is your winner of the G One climax. Grab a picture! I swear, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you from the stream. No, I'm gonna okay. cut you from the stream. I swear, if you put, okay. I will tell, I will literally take you out of the stream. Okay, hold on. Oh wait, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, okay, now let's move on. Good stuff. New Japan Pro <laughs> but I feel like right now we reached the point where we talk about everything positive, professional wrestling, what to expect, outlook, and all that type of stuff across NWA, PWD, DCW, MLW, Ring of Honor, NJPW, AEW, Impact Wrestling, uh, the list goes on and on and on. I cannot wait for Josh Alexander versus Christian Cage. That's going to be a hell of a match. We did that. I'm going to watch Bound for Glory. <clears throat> Yeah, what? option C. We have not brought that up yet on this uh, on this view and prompt. Right. We have as not we, brought that as up. we saw Victory Road. Josh Alexander made history. He beat what many would call the best exhibition champion ever, Chris Saban, who was going for his historic ninth reign. And then Chris Saban, we didn't know what he was talking about, kind of whispered some advice, maybe words of wisdom, maybe respectful encouragement to one Joaquin Webb and Josh Alexander, where I'm just going to say it right now. And while I also talk about Forbidden Door, Christopher Daniels back in Impact Wrestling. Who saw that come with the original? Colin Angel has returned, a former exhibition champion in itself, where he participated in one of my favorite matches of all time. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Anyone remember AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe versus Christopher Daniels' triple threat? The best triple threat match, I still say, non-WWE-wise. Oh, heck, heck. The best triple threat match I've ever seen, top three in history. There, I said it. But now, Josh Alexander looks to be the face of Impact Wrestling, and the only way to do that is to be the Impact Railway champion. So as you alluded to, he cashed in up in the sea, and it's official. Josh Alexander will now challenge for the first time ever for the Impact World of Champion against Christian Cage at Bound for Glory. Perfect. And why Christian Cage is proud for Ben Dora, a former Impact champion in his own right under TNA with the NWA title. Christian Cage with the epic and the motto of outwork everyone. If there's one person that could rival that, I feel it is Josh Alexander. So, guys, is this Josh Alexander's time? Will he outwork Christian Cage? Will we finally see Josh Alexander be the face of Impact Wrestling? Josh Alexander is a very darn good wrestler. I mean, bout to bout. One of the best I've ever seen in Impact. I put now, him up there with Kurt Angle of how good he is. Yeah. And I thought we was going to get Kitty and Josh Alexander because when they first, when Josh first brought up option C, he brought up option C to Kitty. But yeah. we all saw how that turned about on Rampage, on the first episode of Rampage, whenever Kenny and Christian squared off in the ring, good Christian match. became champ. So now Josh Alexander has now cashed in on option C on Christian, in which I think this will be a technical wrestling clinic, in my opinion. <clears throat> because of the fact that we know these two can go hold for hold, move for move. And basically, Christian is a veteran. Heck, Hall of future Hall of Famer at this rate. 
and Josh Alexander is becoming one of the best at Impact has ever had to offer. Now, with this October 23rd, Bound for Glory in Las Vegas and Sin City, where every single promotion that can come to Impact, AEW, New Japan, and AAA, they have teased it throughout these few these weeks and these months. Yep. Which I think will be, which, oh, man, which, ah, they had to coincide with AEW on that day, didn't they? I'm going to have to watch both at the same time simultaneously. I, I love professional wrestling, but sometimes it has its cons, and this is one of them. Yeah. But anyways. We, we ran into that with Triple Mania and, and NJPW Resurgence. This is the challenges we yep. face sometime, King, but continue. But this will be a good main event, but I got Christian winning. I think Christian – I don't think Josh will outwork Christian. Whoa. I think – yeah, part of me feels that. Part of me feels that I don't think Josh – will. he'll come close. But I think, boom, right out of nowhere, there'll be a kill switch. Kill switch will be engaged, and Christian will still – Christian will survive this. That's how I'm going to put it. Survive. Okay. Against Josh – well, I mean, we heard the, the we heard the face to face uh, last week, and he basically uh, encompassed that he literally could come out of this with nothing. Christian did so, and that basically said, "Things makes this decision easier." Now, at uh, Casey, that being said, this is all can about. There's a humor side, but let's talk about the professional wrestling side. You're looking at two of the most passionate, driven, I feel most critical about themselves as professional wrestlers, going after and representing the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Now, we've seen the likes of Kurt Angle. We've seen the likes of Lance Storm. We've seen the likes of Chris Jericho. We've seen the likes of everybody that's held this title imaginable. From Bobby Roode. Damn it, why is he not backing it? Oh, I digress. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> AJ Styles. Uh, you get Kurt Angle, you get the idea. Give me your Samoa outlook. Yeah. That's Samoa Joe. Thank you. Give me your outlook towards this match, this might be literally the toughest Impact World Championship match to call. While King kind of shot me Christian Cage, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if he still retained the gold. Because again, it's brought Christian Cage's career into a new light. After seven years, like he said, his career has been reignited. He's a world champion again. So give me your thoughts. Do you think it is finally Josh Alexander's time to be the guy of Impact Wrestling? Considering he's already done everything else in that company, and has been complete competing in New Japan Pro Wrestling on Strong. Is it Josh Alexander's time? Josh Alexander versus Christian Cage for the Impact World title. In my honest opinion, no. I do not think it is Josh Alexander's time yet because Christian Cage has a lot more to do with the Impact World title. And Christian Cage is not ready to drop the Impact World title as of yet. It's still still too early for Christian Cage to do that. And Josh Alexander first Christian Cage at Bound for Glory. Yes, it will be a good it'll be a great match and all. Josh Alexander will put bring out a good match in Christian Cage and but once Christian Cage hits a kill switch on Josh Alexander, Josh Alexander is going night, night, and the match is over. I have Christian Cage retaining the Impact World title over Josh Alexander. But will I be shocked if Josh Alexander wins it? Yes, I will be. I will be stunned if Josh Alexander wins it. But I do not expect Josh Alexander to. But Josh Alexander has done everything he could in Impact Wrestling and he accomplished everything he could in Impact and all that. But my predict the end result right here is going to be Christian Cage retains the Impact World title with a kill switch. One, two, and a three. And that's going to be it right there because it's too early for Christian Cage to drop the Impact World title. Wow. 
you guys kind of surprised me with that because again, when I feel about Josh Alexander, he's been Impact Wrestler of the Year next to Deanna Perrazzo, who still has her title. And some people wonder if she's going to drop that at Bound for Glory against Mickey James. And no. I, I got to be honest with you, I, I just don't see it. More realistically, no, more realistically, I see Deanna Perrazzo holding on to her title than Christian Cage retaining the Impact World title. But I do get where you're coming from because honestly, who keeps being on the Impact marquee? Moose. I keep thinking Moose is going to be the one to take it off Christian Cage. And honestly, mm-hmm. I feel hindsight. I feel like he's the uncrowned Impact World Champion. He's that damn good. Yes, he is. For a, for a big guy his size that can move like a cruiserweight and that has the like strength of a heavyweight, I still think Moose is that one to, be, to take the Impact World title if they want to do Moose and Christian Cage in the future Impact pay-per-view. He has yet to hold the impact gold. He held the all TNA gold and made that a highlight just for himself. I got a couple of dimensions out of that. And he's come so close, including against Kim Omega, but never got it. So again, I feel that Moose is the uncrowned impact world champion. But what that does for Josh Alexander, I guess only time will tell. I've seen him compete now in GPW Strong. Maybe he can go over there and maybe challenge the Strongboy champion or maybe even show up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Again, I keep thinking about how the hell are you going to pull off a three-night wrestling team? But That'll be a conversation for another viewer. Yeah. Closer. Ooh, ooh. Especially when we learn what our main event might be after the G1 concludes. Keyword might be, because as we learned last year, anything can change. Freaking Jay White beating, go to the butcher for the case and still falling short where it mattered. Yet, he still is the current never all the way champion, representing himself in strong. And as you're alluded to, King, bringing Bullet Club across the world. His own way, recruiting Bay, who's now bringing Bullet Club into Impact Wrestling, trying to take over that company. But there is a stone pit bull that has his eyes yep. on a piece of gold that we all know Tomoshi is very familiar with. Yes, he is. As Jay White said in an interview on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, he wants to welcome Tomohiro Ishii to the United States of Jay White. Uh, just book the match is all I got to say. Because, again, when it comes to Toro Ishii, he deserves to be a champion. I'm glad he's a six-man champion. He always brings out the best fight. He wants to be five everybody he faces. But if you're going to associate Tala with the Stone Pit Bull, it's the freaking never overweight. It's the – blah. It's the – yeah, it is literally the never overweight towel. What Rocker Mail calls the BMF title. Since Tanahashi and Jay White has won it, though, and it kind of feels like the never has kind of lost its identity that I'm so familiar with when I saw with Kenta and Goto and Shibata and Ishii and so many other greats, even Shingo Takagi. How can I forget that? So again, I feel like Tomoshi needs that title back in my personal opinion, but I digress. All right. So guys, we've had a good, positive, fun time. We talked about a lot of great stuff, but as of every fan pro wrestling, there's stuff that makes us go, what the fuck? So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that, shall we? I don't think there's a stronger example than last night. This pay-per-view brought to you by Ikea. So for those that did not watch it, let me talk to you. On a show that's called Extreme Rules, there was only one match that was literally a stipulation. That was Extreme Rules. That was the main, I killed King. That was the main event. Like a fish, like like that rock <laughs> promo he cut on Law Resist Us. So it could be a flopping set of I'm fish. Talk. Like, I'm just gonna let him talk. So flopping set of fish laying right here on the mat. So we're just gonna have Finn Balor, the demon, who basically was basically the biggest thing and the best thing that was going in NXT. The best thing that was going in, who was undefeated at the time until Samoa Joe beat him at NXT Takeover the end in a steel cage match for the NXT title. And we're just gonna have him on the main roster. Uh, let's see, first Universal Champion, the Demon. Um, let me see, and then um, that even though that title was cursed at the time, I still think it is cursed. Um, and now you know we're gonna go. Uh, did he brought? He didn't bring the Demon against Brock, which I felt like he should have brought the Demon back against Brock at the Royal Rumble. He never did. Um, he brought the Demon back at WrestleMania 36. Well, 35, 30, 35, 35. Against, 35. 35 against Bobby Lashley, which I don't feel like why you have to bring back the Demon. You could have won the Intercontinental Title. Just by yourself without the demon. Um, but I understand it was WrestleMania, so I give that a bypass. That's the only bypass I'm giving. 
Um, <laughs> let's see here. Now, here we are. Um, oh, oh, let's not. Here we are. Uh, we faced uh, the Fiend, which, oh, my God. Um, we, I know there was never a demon in Fiend altercation. We could have got that, but um, I don't know why they didn't go down that route. You just had Finn Balor dressed in all white like he got all of a sudden and just got beat by the Fiend. Um, let me see if I can think of anything else. Oh, and here we are. We're just going to have, you know, Finn Balor bring back the demon against Roman Reigns, which I don't know why you wanted to do that. Why did you have to, why did you want to, oh, yeah, well, well, if Bray ain't, Bray ain't here to do it, so who's going to take up that mantle? Oh, I got it. Let's bring back Finn Balor's alter ego, the demon, and we're just going to have him flop like a fish outside the ring. Like, really? That's what we're doing now? We're making one of the best professional wrestlers who started Bullet Club, who was at the time the longest reigning NXT champion, bring back the ultra ego and it just flopped like a fish like we're watching Finding Nemo. Oh, how, how, how great. How, how lovely. How lovely. I'm going to flop like Finding find, um, What's next? We're going to bring Dory. Is that what we're doing? Like, <laughs> is that what I'm going forward. I touched the butt on this ship. Is that what we're doing? Or, oh, I touched the butt. Uh, are you good? Are you good, team? You're good. I think you broke Casey. I mean, I think you broke Casey. Well, uh. Uh, and then what's next? Because we're talking fish over here with Ballard. What's next? He's gonna be coming that little uh oh, aqua man. tank in front of Dennis offense becomes how much fish. Is that what we're doing too? How, how much fish could Bobby Fish fry? If oh, Bobby no. Fish go fry fish. More like how yeah. much fish how can much Finn fish? Bella fry if Finn Bella could fry fish since we're flopping <laughs> around the ring. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I can't. I'm the <laughs> I try. All right. So yeah, uh, as, he, as he alluded to, folks, the demon was basically cast for dead until the heartbeat of the arena resuscitated the demon and his music played. We got red lighting and he went on a theatrical rampage. And as it looked like he was about to put in the last killing shot, his ring must have been put together by a key because the rope exploded. And <laughs> literally, <laughs> as he was going for the coup de grace, Ikea must have forgot to tighten the bolts. That's why you get extra parts. And literally, <laughs> the top rope exploded. I think you not. The top rope exploded. God do it for the God, rope. God, okay. I, I, I think Sean Ross Sapp alluded on that and said, God has came back for his revenge from Backlash 2006. And Roman thanking God for that. <laughs> oh, oh, and I got one. I got one. <laughs> Go ahead. I got one. Oh, my God. Or it could have been John Cena that screwed the Bauer <laughs> out of the Roman Reigns match, but we couldn't see Cena doing. We just exactly. see Cena. It could have been John Cena that did it. So while King was talking about the fish flopping and we're talking about Ikea, let's go ahead and figure about why and what the fuck. So yeah, the demon has gotten his first main roster defeat at the hand of the Roman Reigns, who basically gives the win to divine intervention. While God was at phase in 2006, he comes back as a heel and worships as the head of the table or I guess acknowledge him <laughs> in, in 2021. I don't know what else to say about this. What the fuck? I broke Casey. Uh, yeah. And that wasn't the only stupid thing on here, folks. So I'll tell you that much. We also had the girl's childhood toy is broken before her. How <laughs> Do you need a hug? Well, Alexa Bliss apparently <laughs> she had a mental breakdown. While we did actually get the regular, I broke both of them. While we did actually get the regular Alexa Bliss in this match, to a degree, it was at the end of the match where literally the doll, oh, Lily, was never there. 
Not used as a foreign object. <laughs> Lily, who cares? who cares about a doll? This is why it's sports <laughs> entertainment. Who cares about a doll? What are we doing? Oh, man. No oh, man. Oh, we're doing oh, Casey. Broke Casey again. We broke Casey again. He's been laughing. He's all oh, laughing. <laughs> So we're going to feel, okay, I don't mean to cut you off, GM, but uh, so like, we're going to revolve a storyline for the Women's World Champ for the Raw Women's Championship around a dog. Yes, yes, we are. You mean the same old women's title that I saw at WrestleMania 32 live? And it is re-debut of the Raw Women's Championship in a triple threat between Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky. Ooh. How do we go from a classic triple Ooh. threat match to the Raw Women's oh, Championship God. to this? <laughs> Yo, wow. you got me. You got go me. Go around the doll. You got me. Say, hey, you got me. Oh. It, it, it was like. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. It was like. Um, for, for 15 know. minutes, I felt like, okay, we're finally getting the original, not saying it because of that <laughs> device in my background, original bliss, but then the doll. And then literally throwing it, and as we know, Big Book National Selection, Sean Flair retains the title. But we weren't there and there, folks, because afterwards, oh God, saw a tragedy that would make Jim Henson cry at, yeah, fuck that. Uh, basically, <laughs> she destroyed the doll and then left the evil queen with her gold, and Alexa Bliss literally had a mental breakdown as the crowd chanted, I kid you not, thank you, Lily. This Okay, but in all seriousness, all joking aside, does this mean the goddess is back? I mean, now here's that... The way, has, here's the way I interpret it, and maybe right. here's the way I interpret it. Do you guys remember when Randy Orton invaded, watch, invaded the Wyatt family? And work with Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And Bray Wyatt yeah. gave him the keys to the kingdom. What did right. Randy Orton do with that sacred piece connected to Bray Wyatt so much? He destroyed it. He burned it Bray down, did. unintended. This gives me some advice to this, but let's think about the aftermath. What was the aftermath of Randy Orton burning down that shed? Let's see, this was years ago. Let me see what first one memory. to be exact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Dang, it's been five years. Refresh yeah. my memory. Refresh he basically my memory. embraced the fawn ashes and says, I will become one with the ground. And then you got that weird cross thing. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Now it's all coming back to me. But with yep. Bliss, with Bliss, she didn't go spasming out like. Bray Wyatt did at the announce table. Like, oh, oh my God. God. Uh, what? Bliss basically screamed the loudest she could while trying to foam at the mouth and do yeah, something that. black, but she couldn't do it. So she ended up continuing to just continue to scream and embrace this, what you think was a part of her. So from a storyline standpoint, it feels like Bliss is losing herself. Whether or not she goes dark or goes back to the way you remember her is yet to be seen. But yes, that was your Raw Women's Championship match. It was determined not by Amy athleticism, but by a doll. Mm, and this is one of the reasons why I'm glad I didn't watch. In other news, the Usos and Street Promise actually had a really good match. The only real match of the night, it felt like, because once again, why yep. do I care about tag team wrestling? These are the two tag teams to watch whenever it comes to them facing each other in the ring. But again, you dump that against the uh, bloodline. Botches, 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 botches galore in the Triple Freddy Nice Championship match where Damon Priest simply won with a roll up. The most dangerous move in all those. 
Uh, and then we had an uh, impromptu opening uh, six-man tag match with uh, New Day back all together against Omas, AJ, and Bobby Lashley, where the New Day won after a miscommunication with, uh, of course, the opposition. And yeah, heard Morgan, it. who deserves so much better, she did win her kickoff match, first ever preview match. The best of her was against Carmella. Nothing special. And for Becky versus Belair, at least it wasn't 26 seconds. It was longer than that. You put in insert minute time here, 26 seconds. But it ended in a DQ. <laughs> because Sasha Banks decided to make her presence known at his back. So it sounds like we're getting a triple threat. <laughs> it's surprising it's at Hunter adopted. But that was basically your WWE pay-per-view this past Sunday. Brought to you by Akia and Jim Henson crying in his brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy it's not easy being Lily uh, that being said Casey all you've done is laugh is there anything you want to say regarding what I discussed happened last night all right like I <laughs> said I'm working on this one I'm glad I did not watch Extreme Rules last night it was no oh, rules. my god no more, yeah. no more rules. That's right. But I'm glad. But here's what gets me. Universal title match. Demon Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. Finn Balor. Flopping around like a dead fish on land that fucking can't breathe out of water for a shit. To be fair, he probably couldn't breathe because he was spirit out of his boots, but continue. What the, but what the fuck do you have Ben Bauer flopping around for? Like. They basically yes. turned the main event into a movie and where the ending was. When you, get, you know. Uh, oh, and here's what gets me. But Ben Bauer going for a. Cooper and Grace on the turnbuckle. How the fuck did the second ring break like that when Finn Bauer's 180 pounds? I mean, it's not like the it's not like the fucking it's not like fucking Braun Strowman in the big show going on top. On the turnbuckle, and then Braun suplex in the big show, and the whole ring breaks. And here's what also gets me like, with, with the rope breaking and all this, I don't think, I mean, it, it probably was God that got his revenge from 2006. But also, turn out, turn out, what revenge does the good Lord up above? Have against the freaking Finn Balor when the freaking yeah. last time you had this representation of God, who might have had Vince McMahon, he mocks God, he mocks God, literally, okay, so we stop. allegedly, back <laughs> in right, 2006, when it was Shawn Michaels and the Almighty, not Bobby Lashley, facing against the McMahon. What <laughs> sort of rhyme or reason is there for God to? Acknowledge someone way it, lesser than him. It is the fucking dumbest shit you ever see in your damn life. Because when you get down to it, I mean, everybody on earth is God's children. God doesn't have a favorite at all when you get down to it. Not our even top Miro. goal in life, Not even <laughs> our, our top goal in life. <laughs> For all of us to do good and get to heaven someday. That's, That's right. Our top goal. Yeah, we lost, we life. found and realized that. But again, we're, 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 not, we're, not, we're not here chastising. We're just saying what we are. You all take that point. You, you, you get down to it. And it's in your Casey. <clears throat> but it was probably John Cena, like I said, that turned heel on Ben Bauer. And finally, John Cena finally turns heel, and it's the long-awaited heel turn 
that we have all been waiting for after Vince McMahon did not turn him heel over over the years. And this and John Cena's heel turn since we all couldn't see him last night was the biggest heel turn since since Hogan did Hulk Hogan did Holly turned into Hollywood Hulk Hulk Hogan with mm. WCW. And Peach. now it's gonna be John Cena challenging Finn Bauer for the number one contenders ship for the <laughs> universal title on SmackDown. And therefore we get a triple threat match for the universal title between Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, and do, 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 since we can't see him. And I would say it was going to because because, because during the match, comes, I noticed that main corner was smoking throughout. And down, and down comes the ghost of John Cena since we can't see him with the triple threat match. But hell, since the ring was probably smoking last night, since I looked at that, it probably hornswoggle that blew up dynamite under the ring. <laughs> that made it collapse. <laughs> Not a tiny sparkler, actually. Probably a tiny sparkler like Gilbert used to have. Yeah. It was, Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert. Hey, Ken, oh Gilbert. Hey, speaking said. of Gilbert, speaking of Gilbert, did you see that meme, though, where I the did. AEW yep. Revolution? It, I, I, yes. to, I, to, I totally did. I totally did. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was uh, unextreme uh, rules last night. Brought to you by Akia. Yes, it and was. Jim Hansen turning over his grain. Extreme oh, rules, yeah. regular rules, normal that rules. Is, that is definitely my uh, worst preview of the year because let's face it, when you're a wrestling oh, spot, when you're a sports <laughs> entertainment enthusiast, <laughs> the number one thing you remember is the ending. So while you might mock what happened in February with a ring, how does this mm-hmm. compare? That's all I gotta say. But anyway, equal. yeah, try equal. But at least there was better matches on that show before that moment. Worried February than it was last night. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about one last tangent. Whether you want to rant or be optimistic or anything like that. You guys know what this week's about from, I don't know what's going to happen. Should I care? This is going to listen change. Maybe it will. The WWE draft is upon us. It is once again (sighs) that time to shake things up again in catering. And it looks (laughs) like we definitely have one conversation piece that doesn't want to talk about the inevitable because the first thing I was going to bring up was, of course... NXT. There it is. There it is. With NXT 2.0 now here, and Vince Man literally building his own crop of stars from the ground up, including <laughs> including Tony Soprano and a Matt Striker reject and a freaking Scott Steiner impersonator that he doesn't respect the Steiner names for. Will we see any of the original breed? Replaced by the new breed on NXT. Who in NXT might be called up out of the dark onto the main roster and turn into something like a gimp or have Bearcat in their name? Or will we actually have some real change in the WWE? Gazes are already tapped out. So I just simply want to ask you all to do one thing if you choose to. Name one draft pick you pray does happen, and one draft pick you pray to God doesn't happen. Mm, if you choose the one, the one pick that I don't want to happen is Johnny Gargano, of course, because of the fact that that man is one of the cornerstones, well, of the old guard. Of NXT, not so much the new. Johnny Takeover was basically remembered for his matches with Andrade, Adam Cole, and Champa. 
Um, Ricochet. Who else I gonna think of? He's 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 got good matches with the Velveteen Dream, Alistair Black, known as Malachi Black. Yeah. Um, the, the list goes on and on because of the fact that if you take Johnny away from the old guard of NXT, that's already step one of you taking away the old guard of what we, of what made us professional wrestling fans fall in love with the WWE once again, but with NXT. Because well, I've already said about the whole Champa thing on our um, Zoom watch along. So I've already said about the whole Champa thing. Oh, yeah. You just given the Champa as a symbolic of the old guard. And once you see Rex Steiner come in and take it away from Champa, if they ever do a takeover, that's going to be basically the old guard has been washed away. Which is why if they draft or Gargano to either Raw or SmackDown, that's just step one of taking the old guard of one of the cornerstones of NXT. Now, that's one pick I don't want to see. The one pick I do want to see, and I'm going to be quite honest, um, this woman should have never even got to NXT in the first place. The formerly known as Taya Valkyrie. Frankie Monet. Yes. Because, to be honest, she should have been one of the few that was like AJ, that was like AJ Styles. She didn't, I, I felt like she doesn't need NXT. Like, I feel like she was already main roster ready. But I get why she went to NXT, you know, to, you know, get her name and, you know, see who she is. Because she, well, she is a familiar face to, as us. We already knew who she. We already know who she is. Yes. But to those people that don't know her, that's the reason why I understood why she went to NXT because you know we know who she is. But to those people, they don't know because it, well, even on the main roster, she'll probably get like at least twenty five percent of a reaction and not a hundred percent. Because we know who she's related to. Yes, that's the reason why. Yep, exactly. And plus, we all know that she's a good wrestler. Notice how I said wrestler, not sports entertainer, wrestler. Right. But uh, that's the one pick I do feel like what, like needs to happen because I feel like she doesn't need NXT. I feel like she's a little bit bigger than that, in my opinion, which is why I think I saw on WWE Twitter that Frankie – and Raquel will be squaring off for the women's world title. The reason why I say that will brought that up is because, well, that could play a factor. And since NXT is involved in the draft yeah. and like if Raquel, I'll be shocked if Raquel loses Same. to Frankie Monet, I'll, I, to Ty Valkyrie. I'll be shocked because that could give an early indication of what's to come. Also, another early indication of what might to come. Ain't the NXT women's tag team to, well, oh, I'm probably probably asking the wrong people here because we don't wear that's not our NXT anymore. But NXT. we still probably still follow follow the uh, WWE. Uh, you, know, you, you, got, you gotta be aware. Uh ladies and gentlemen, let me just add a tiny disclaimer here. We're, we're not, you know, what you might call shiz or whatever the IWC has turned oh, for. No. Fans, in my opinion, fans are fans. You try and classify fans, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, that I got, that I say is this. I look at all forms of wrestling, keyword wrestling. WWE is still world wrestling entertainment because it's full of wrestlers that can wrestle. I want to show you wrestling, but a delusional, out of touch old man and his 50 year old plus bent that can't work a camera for his life literally calls this place entertainment at its lowest form. That being said, we don't hit WWE. We wish for it to be better. King, continue to speak. Yeah, exactly. We don't. We don't wish like we wish for it to get better because we grew up watching WWE. So don't take what you know I said because we all want WWE to get better. We all and want. If you're WWE on your soapbox, go buy yourself the world's smallest violin and cry in the corner and drink your own tears. I have zero emotion for you. Now continue. But 
<clears throat> oh, but also I did see a little teaser I shared, I think in both, you know, in the group chat as well. And from a top card uh, training company that they make sports training cards, even WWE and AEW and NBA, NFL, and so forth. Wow. And they made a trading card, trading card of El Shirai. And at the bottom of it, it didn't say NXT. It said, it said SmackDown. SmackDown. And so Tops could get. So Tops could be saying, "Well, WWE must have told Tops and said, you know what." Since the women are having their NXT Women's Tag Team title match, I think I, for, I forgot who because I don't keep up with them that much. Toxic right? Attraction, Manny hey, Rose, and the hey, other. Hey, so there's what it's a dead giveaway, and it's very obvious since I've seen that trading stop part of Io Shirai and said SmackDown at the bottom. It's a dead giveaway. That's very obvious. Io Shirai and Zoe Starks are definitely confirmed to lose the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships to Gigi Dolan and J.C. Jane. Definitely yep. confirmed. Yeah, Definitely I'm confirmed. Right, right, Io right, Shirai. Right. Hey, Io Shirai, let me tell you this. I hope to God, I hope to God she does not turn out like Oscar. I hope not. Because, let me tell you something. This Io Shirai, I'm ner- I'm going to be nervous as fuck for her on SmackDown. Because with that dark entrance, that dark banging of an entrance scene that she has, because Io Shirai, I hope she gets treated right. I really do. I hope she succeeds on SmackDown. But I do not trust this fucking management with Io Shirai one bit at all. Because let me put it out there, these folks. You think Oscar oh, first came out of NXT? Oh, Oscar's going to be fine. She's going to succeed and, and all this type of bullshit. Because when you get down to it, look what happened to Oscar on the main roster. Look at Look at that. I mean, Oscar hasn't been treated like NXT Oscar at all. Because look at her matches with Carmella. Oscar should have straight up ran through Carmella right there. Carmella, let me tell you something. If this was New Japan Pro Wrestling, Oscar would fucking squash Carmella because Carmella would have been a jobber with New Japan Pro Wrestling right there. Well, tell it, tell it, it would be stardom, and it wouldn't yeah. be Oscar. It would be yeah. hard to continue. But we get what you were saying, though. When, but, uh, yeah, I understand what you're to, saying. When, when you get down to it, though, Il Shirai, God almighty, God help her, if she is under that same gimmick with the dark entrance scene, because let me tell you something. You mark my fucking words right now. I mean, you mark my words. They are going to try to change her gimmick from that dark banging of an entrance scene back to her old fucking gimmick before she turns heel. And God forbid, if that never happens, that is going to be a fucking miracle if she succeeds because, good Lord, EO, I wish you the best of luck if you get sent to SmackDown. I wish NX, any NXT people the best of luck wherever show they get, go, go to. If they're because involved. let's remember this. If they are Triple H's people, mark my words on this. They are... Going to sabotage the fuck out of them like they have done with Karrion Cross on Monday Night Raw. Now I'm in a minute. And Keith Lee. That botch Keith Bearcat, Bearcat Lee. Bearcat. I, I, refuse, I refuse to call him by that name. I refuse to call Keith Lee by that name. Because I like to remember the old Keith Lee from NXT, oh, where that guy, 
where he was nothing but a badass with that banger of an entrance theme. And I remember when the first Bask in My Glory, Bask in His Glory, like hit, like on Monday Night Raw, they were like, oh, <laughs> we were getting excited, boys. Don't get me wrong. But when it went to the generic shit, our faces were like, what in the fuck is the this internet. fucking Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse bullshit? When you get down, when you get down to it, though, the Triple H's people, fantasy, whatever, Triple H folks, go to Raw or SmackDown. I hope they succeed. But I don't trust management with them one day. They will fucking sabotage them on purpose just because they were created under Triple H and some of them came from the Indies. Like DK, for example, oh, came from the it. Indies. There, came there from the in- Indies again. I mean, with her, and no disrespect, I hope she gets treated right on Raw or SmackDown. I really do. But, but please, for the love of God, do not turn her into a into fucking lava girl type of gimmick <laughs> and all this shit with her pink hair and have her come out in a fucking costume similar to fucking lava girl. No, oh, do wow. not do that to DK. Do not do that to DK at all. Let her come out how she was in NXT and let her get used right. The day that, God forbid, that they have her come out in a lava girl type gimmick, you will see the biggest fucking rant you will ever see from in your entire life, because there is going to be a nuke right up in the chat. And okay. I wish any, I wish any NXT people the best of luck, but you can't trust the management on this one, since they're all Triple H's people. But all yeah. in all, that's all I got to say about that. But I'll tune in this Friday to see what goes on. I will have my eyes on SmackDown like a fucking hawk. You mark yeah. my words on that. And because it is the WWE Draft, I think it's only fitting because we wonder the future. God help our faves, NXT, and right now above there, too. God help them all. I think it's really fitting that we get together on a Zoom and witness the either self-destruction or right. pray to God for the glorious rising of the W. I, I ain't coming on Zoom this Friday. I want to watch it for myself. And myself oh, I get that. I'm talking about afterwards. I'm sure we're going to have a lot to say because you know we're going to discuss the results. Of course, Lord we'll be happy. It ends on Monday, though. Yeah. It ends on Monday, though. True, but we can at least talk about round one if we choose to, because I'm sure we will yeah. after we go from an all-time high, because, of course, this Friday we got Rampage from AEW. Hey. And, oh, wait, how do we not even talk about this? Guys, talk about gimmicks. AEW knows how to make a gimmick seem cool. Barhouse bra, a barhouse bra, the arcade anarchy, parking lot fight. Still one of my top five favorite non-traditional AEW dynamite matches ever. But what the hell are we supposed to expect in a hair versus hair match with Jack Evans and Orange Cassidy? Oh, see, oh, no. we thought it was going to be Matt Hardy that was supposed to face Orange Cassidy. But as what? you got on Grand Slam, um, he decided to basically oh, Jack Evans. Jack Evans will take my place. Jack Evans, you'll face Orange Cassidy in a hair versus hair match. And I'm like, hair versus hair? <laughs> like, y'all made the Ar- Arca- Anarchy-, Anarchy the best. Y'all made the parking lot brawl one of the best. Y'all made the bunkhouse brawl with Dustin and QT. Y'all made that one a good one. But I'm still feeling to this day to, like, I'm still feeling eh about it, but if we know AEW, but like if we know AEW, they can pull it off. But right now, I'm just feeling like I don't know how I feel about this until Friday. 
Yeah, because as we know, that's the only match announced for uh, Rampage. It's the first ever hair versus uh, hair match in AEW history. And with AEW never ending in disqualifications, and uh, I, I guess it had to be a traditional match before the final bell, it makes me wonder if the F- HFO is going to come out and maybe save Jack Evans, try and get the Orange cast and force shave him. And will the Dark Order and the Best Friends once again play the difference mix? Right now, the numbers are not in favor of HFO. They're outnumbered by the Dark Order and the Best Friends, as we saw this past Friday, when they try to add further damage to Ty J ahead of what's finally coming ahead this Wednesday. So it's a weird situation where I wonder where is the end game here between Orange Cassidy and, and Big Money Matt Hardy, which I still believe is truly going to be the hair versus hair match. Because again, Matt Hardy wants to delete Orange Cassidy by his hair this time, apparently. So it, 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 it does give me a lot of, uh, you know, wonder, but I'm like, hair versus hair, is this the way to go? Casey, your thoughts on this? Hair versus hair, Orange Cassidy and Jack Evans. Yeah. All right. I thought the hair versus hair match and Orange Cassidy and Jack Evans. Yes. Mm. I say, I say that oh, my pick is OT will probably win this match. Because I can't see Orange Cassidy losing this match due to how over he is with the crowd. And I see Orange Cassidy winning this match over Jack Evans in the hair versus hair match. And then Orange Cassidy, when he's shaving Jack Evans' head, hair, I say after Jack Evans goes bald, I say Orange Cassidy will do his thumbs up at the end there after OC like wins the match. But I say I I got OC, OC winning this match over Jack Evans in the hair versus hair. The somehow whatever but doing whatever to win, I guess, or whatever the case is. You, you guys want to say whatever. Yeah. A ball Jack Evans if if he does get his hair shaved bald. A bald Jack Evans coming up with Angelico to TH2 music and break dancing? No. Even, even a bucket was, hat wouldn't work for Jack Evans. It works for Angelico. No. It would not work for Jack Evans. I can't see either of these men being bald. No, no. I can't. Me neither. Me neither. But, but it does keep my interest. What a situation. I'm glad you touched on the touch yeah. the dark order to get involved because right now it will like mo like 90% of the dark order is willing to work together, but you have Uno and Stu are not willing to get on the same page with them still. But I got this in mind and shout out to um Draven for wrestling covers that uh came up with this future booking for Wednesday. Um Ty J wins against Penelope in the bunny, which I feel like Allie has a, uh, he needs it, really needs it because she's a cheater, but that's a different discussion. Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's a different. Uh, but Stop that. Our quarter gets in the middle of the ring. They all shake, they all, you know, congratulate with Anna J, but somehow um, Uno and Stu are not out there. They're, well, they're out there, but like they yeah, like a group tunnel, of- maybe like looking on or something like that. But they're not there with yeah, Exactly. Like, you know, we all get, you know, they all come together like a group hug or something like that. But then Uno, but then the lights go out. Lights go out. And in the middle of that win- in the middle of that ring is Wyndham. And he puts basically gets the dark order back on track to what it used to be, but for Brody. Basically meaning. Y'all better get on the same page and let's take over. Like basically saying, we well, all remember why y'all came together for like when Brody first came in that the dark order was on a whole other level. The other levels where I even said that right next to the elite. Now the dark order is still one of the best factions up there with the elite. When it comes to 
take over when it comes to dominant faction takeovers. That's what they used to be. Yes. When bro was in leadership. God rest his soul. I missed the man. Um, and then all of a sudden, Hangman came along. And Hangman was that stability factor to keep the Dark Order in check. But when Hangman took his time off, which he still is, the Dark Order hasn't been on the same page. Even, even Anna sees that. Basically saying, if y'all not, if y'all not gonna be on the same page, don't come from my matches. Don't come and show support for my matches. Well, we know who's on the same page now, everybody, like you said, but the original two, might I add. Again, you're talking about the original two. I thought it was Jesse the Uno, but it's almost like Stu Grayson, you know, he's there for his friend. I wonder really if it's just Evil Uno at the heart and Stu Grayson right now is also confused. Remember, this is the Stu Grayson that was always attacked on BTE by Ana J. Exactly. So that's why that's why uh, that's why I brought up that uh, future booking of, you know, they're still not getting along. Lights go out. Wyndham shows up. And then we go from there. Is he going to get the Dark Order back on track? But here's another here's another possibility. We talk about, you know, Dark Order, Bray Wyatt, or Rotunda being in it, not being fiend, blah, 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 etc. What if Rotunda shows up with another motive? Maybe it's like, you know, psychology-wise. He's doing this for the Dark Order, but that's not the only reason why he's there. He's there to do something else. Maybe he participates in the House of Black. Maybe he gets involved in a Darby Allen and a Sting, like a promo. Like, you wonder what sort of influence across AEW maybe Rotunda is. What's his end game, maybe? Maybe Rotunda's there to literally mess with the foundation of AEW. I feel there's a lot more of a dynamic to figure about when it comes to Bray Wyatt being involved in AEW, if that happens, keyword if, because yeah. I'm not holding my breath, yeah. seeing is believing. But I don't think I would just literally sign him into working with the Dark Order, let alone joining it, even in the name of the late great uh, Brody Lee. Because why it makes sense for him to show up here, because it is literally Brody Lee's hometown, God rest his soul. And yes, I do believe why we're talking about the Wednesday night matches that Ty J will defeat Penelope Point and the Bunny, Gay Alley, because Ana J, of course, was endorsed by, you shut up, was endorsed by uh, <laughs> freaking uh, uh, Brody Lee and Kristen at number 99. So it only makes sense. For Ty J to truly get the win here, if nobody else in Dark Road deserves a win in freaking uh, Blue Card, the uh, uh, Brody Lee's a hometown, it's definitely on a J. Because if it wasn't for uh, Brody Lee, the Queen Slayer would not exist. So I do agree with you on them winning this match, which kind of works. Uh, but with that being said, I, I, that that'll be a different conversation. That'll be on the next AW view or the next AW review. Should we choose to uh, do one? I'm sure we will on the next AW view about how I feel about, you know, that feud. Uh, I'm going to be definitely talking about it on Twitter. Stay tuned, folks. Uh, that being said, it, it's really weird to think about how this Dark Order thing falls out in the end. Does someone leave? There's a segregation of a different group from within form where you literally got Evil Order's two grades to bring it back. The Creepers, maybe. And form of their own tangent of Dark Order. Do you get some sort of internal faction like you got with Bullet Club with Evil in the House of Torture? Uh, yeah, I went there. Uh, oh. I, 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 I just don't know. I'm really confused right now what could be the influence of Bray Wyatt in general in AEW. But I don't feel like it will just be the Dark Order, nor do I think it should be necessarily just the Dark Order. But it definitely should be someone that correlates to the spirit of the late, great Brody Lee. And why he was there to literally lead the Dark Order, I don't think that necessarily was Brody Lee's only motive for being there. It was just the spot he chose. Because again, Brody Lee was about moving forward, like everyone there is, professional wrestling. So and for me, it's a lot to think about. Now, that being said, before we close, talking about what is to come this week in wrestling, especially for AEW and Wednesday Night Dynamite, Casey, do you have anything further to add regarding this Dark Order saga and maybe how Bray Wyatt can influence it? What I got to add for the Dark Order saga is, yeah, the Dark Order is bickering and all this and arguing a lot in their matches because they're missing a leader and they don't have a leader that could break them up. Like from arguing and all this, 
But the Dark Order saga, I believe it's going to continue in all this, but I say Bray Wyatt, when he arrives, botch William Rotunda, botch. when he arrives in AEW, he is going to become the new leader of the Dark Order and William Rotunda is going to lead the Dark Order to the most dangerous, terrifying group like they once were under the leadership of Brody Lee because Brody Lee got rest his soul and Bray Wyatt I mean, Roy Rotunda is going to lead the Dark Order to a very dangerous, scary group, group in AEW. And the Dark Order saga is definitely gone, going to continue. But right now, like Anna J said, they said, she said that I'm, if we're going to continue doing this, do not come out for my matches. And Anna J knows that there is friction within the dark border. And William Rotunda, when he arrives in AEW and becomes a new leader of Dark Order, shit is going to be straightened out real quick and put under control because William Rotunda is going to run the group just like how Brody Lee would have still ran the group for, a, for a, the Dark Order. And William Rotunda, if he debuts in Rochester, New York, that's the hometown of Brody Lee, what a pop that is going to be from the crowd. When the lights go out, William Rotunda is standing right inside the ring. And it should be very interesting where this is all leading up, leading up to with the Dark Order saga. Cannot wait to tune in to find out. Just again, seeing is believing. I, I mean, if the lights go out and I get somehow, and he literally is just rocking in a rocking chair in a broadly S type robe or like, you know, um, a, a, the sense, it would truly shock me. But that being said, I do go back to this. You talk about the Dark Order not being on the same page tonight, Elevation, ever since Rampage, when they literally came out to save Ty J, it, everybody's back and seems on the same page except for two people. So, again, it's the original two, but if you leave them out of the equation, the rest of the Dark Order right now, they seem pretty much on a common front. Yet, uh, example tonight, that four eight-man tag with freaking John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Preston, and Alan Five Angels worked like a row of machine perfectly. Now, whether or not Kaboon is also, you know, in with this or two, because he was the only one not there, you, you do have a point. But like yeah, to, to me, it's it, it, it back to the Yeah. <laughs> And I, I'm just really curious for Wednesday. But that's really all I got to say as far as LATW goes. But that being said, guys, uh, we pretty much, I think, covered, talked about, we've had our ramp piece. We've had our good times, high times, sad times, low times. I think it's been a pretty fun conversation. So I'm just going to say this. There's, again, so much reason to be a professional wrestling fan more than ever with so much possible more than ever. Like Adam Cole alluded to on Oral Sessions. The fact that Forbidden Door, all these dream matches are literally possible. It's an unbelievably exciting time. And, of course, the fun continues this week. The NWA uh, Power Hour continues as they continue with this women's division. A good luck deal with the hot mess. Each prospects like uh, Tootie, Tootie Lynn and uh, Kylie Ray and Sky Blue definitely become one of my uh, favorites. I want to see more of Debbie Malenko and Thunder Kid is definitely uh, surprising. Curious to see where we go with uh, Mims, Marshy Rocket, Crimson, Jack Stane, uh, the uh, Dudaya, and James Storm, and of course where Trevor and Nick Gold is, and everything else stands to be gold to their uh, next pay per view special. Um, by all uh, means necessary, I think it's called. I gotta look up the name. Uh, of course, NXT UK continues. We now know our Heritage Cup awaits Tyler Bate, and I love that women's division. Since God, you gotta do something about being. Oh, I'm sorry, botch. Blair Davenport and her unruly uh, nature. I feel like she's going to be the next one to challenge for uh, Michael Satomara. Uh, NXT 2.0, not my NXT. Uh, oh, as far as AEW goes, Adam Jungle Cole, Boy. baby, versus Jungle Boy. Semi Guevara <laughs> versus Miro for the TNT title. 
The further dissension of the Nightmare family, it seems, as far as Cody goes, tagging with Lee Johnson against a very unique duo in Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. And, of course, the feud I've been waiting for in the women's division to come, Ana Jay and Ty Conti, Ty Jay, finally take on a tag team action, the Bunny, hey, Ali, and Penelope Ford. And finally, we will see if this thing gets settled once and for all or if another knuckle dusting awaits the two. And will the Dark Order or HFO be involved as well? Only time can tell. And the fact of the matter, these are the only four matches, known segments, period, for Dynamite this week. Who will cut a promo? Who will get called out? What will get built up? What will be added to AEW Rampage? And who could show up? Only it's like, like you said, yep, like you said, there has been no segments. No one could, you know, doing no uh, on-screen promo yet. No. Kind of leaves a little window open if it happens. Well, if there's one thing we know, King Casey, AEW Dark, and they always talk about Diamond, and sometimes they talk about something else to come to. And clearly, you keep in touch with AEW platforms and social media. Always keep me up to date. You know me. I'm always going to give you the graphic and keep you informed, too. Speaking of which, looks like we got our card tomorrow night. Eight matches from the wingman to the Dark Order to Funda Rosa. Once again, in ring action to Kiara Hogan back in ring action. There's in so much more awaits in an eight-match showcase, it looks like, tomorrow night for AEW Dark. Of course, now from the All Elite Zone in Universal Studios which I'm definitely looking forward to as well. And I love that name so much. And of course, we continue, hey. and of course we continue down the line with Impact Wrestling, where Christopher Daniels makes his Impact Wrestling return in ring oh. debut against Mad Men Fulton. The influence, mm-hmm. and of course, with uh, fallout from uh, taking on Team Strong Smile, will, of course, deal with each other as we look towards who will challenge for the Knockouts Tag Team Championships this coming Saturday at Knockouts Knockdown. I already know about taking ticket this fight. You all know me. And, of course, so much more to come with uh, Raj Singh now back. And it looks like Matt Cadona and Chelsea Green are not going to be done with freaking Rohit and Shira yet. Yeesh. And I'm sure we're going to get more continued tension between Josh Alexander and Christian Cage as we move up towards Bound for the Glory as well as the Lucha Rosa and Mickey James. The two biggest matches built so far for Bound for Glory. We'll probably learn more about the College Shot Gauntlet, and we'll learn our first participant, I feel like, for the Triple Threat to come at Bound for Glory with the Triple Threat Qualifier towards the Estrogen title as well. So much to look forward to in all things wrestling. And I'm sure we're going to get more from Ikea and, of course, uh, God's favorite champion, Roman Reigns at the table, as Friday night will start the WWE Draft. And we will be watching it on our own. We'll have our own reactions. We'll talk probably in the chat. But we'll get together after Rampage Friday night with so far we know is a hair versus hair match and talk about the draft outcome too. And of course, stay tuned, folks. I'll be with the lovely Cindy G on the Teddy Turnbuckle Talk Network to, of course, review a W Rampage. And there will be more ATW uh, views to come as well. Impromptu, maybe other guests. I'm sure I'll have more discussion pieces, rants, and of course, Happy excitement to come as well. We also, of course, have continued G1 Climax action, where, in my opinion, the determining match for the A block, I feel like right now, is Little Khan versus Zack Sabre Jr. on the next day of A block action. And, of course, the next day coming up will include B block action. As long as Evil loses, I don't care about anything else. Just Evil, continue to lose. That's all I want. Continue to lose. Okay, we're all in agreement about that. Very good. And Okada, of course, will take, oh, excuse me, Ryan the Manga, Kazuchika Okada, will take on Yoshihashi in this week's uh, B Block action uh, main event to come. Again, you can't measure a heart, but with Kevin Kelly, it's, when Kevin Kelly says it's a winnable match, it hurts that it's so freaking true, it seems, against Yoshihashi. My God. Mm-hmm. That poor guy. Mm-hmm. That poor guy. Or Yoshi. Man. <laughs> You gotta respect the heart, though, man. All right, he deserves that six man title, being part of the best, in my opinion, six man overweight champions of all New Japan for wrestling history with nine successful defenses under their belt. And of course, we'll get continued attention with the United Empire as it continues to grow. Good Lord. And so much more great action to come on New Japan Strong this Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NJBWWorld.com. Uh, and, of course, you got MLW, the CMLL, All Japan Pro Wrestling, Wrestling Wrestling Noah that got past their uh, N1, I believe, if not over uh, already. And, of course, Stardom. 
there's just so much pro wrestling. It's hard to keep up. It's impossible to keep up with it all. PWG, DCW included. I can't wait to see what's next to Killer Kelly. I hope that I heals, though. Damn! Mm. And we'll see what's next in Ring of Honor for, of course, Ben Nito and, of course, the Women of Honor World Champion, uh, uh, Roxy. And, of course, MLW growing their uh, women's division. And, of course, Hammersmith and uh, uh, his, uh, the, the, the Fatou guy finally coming ahead. Sorry, I forget the name. Again, folks, I can only remember so much. Yeesh. That's what I got to say about that. So as we uh, close uh, this incredibly fun conversation on all things wrestling, gentlemen, any closing arguments, prepositions, statements, rants, excitements, proverbs, galore that you have to talk about in all things wrestling before we conclude? Casey, I will start with you. No, not at all. I pretty much said what I got had to say earlier. And I mean, I have enough. I mean, I have nothing else to say after I said, said it all on top of off the top of my head. All right. What very else good. is there to say? Again, very good, sir. Uh, King, any closing of remarks on anything wrestling before we conclude this uh, fun little platform tonight? Uh, if you ever continue to feel down, down in your life, if you've ever had a bad day, anything like that, bad day at work, bad day in general, just watch part of this Forbidden Door. It could be AEW, it could be Impact, MLW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, NWA, Ring of Honor, CML, Triple A, All Japan Pro Wrestling, Noah. Those will be the things that keep you happy and satisfied within life to know that professional wrestling will always forever be in your life until the day you die. Amen to that, brother. And again, your graphic, it speaks great details, but it just doesn't do professional wrestling justice when you think about there's still so much to explore, discover, learn, be known. Who will rise as that next great breakout star of this industry in professional wrestling? And I'm not just talking about AEW, Dark, but we've already had the likes of Big Shy Lee, Tessa Price, and Kylan King, just to name a few. But uh, And the acclaim. Yeah, but I digress. It's Tony Khan. That was fucking brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Come on, that was brilliant. You gotta admit, AEW the acclaimed got served. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to finally the varsity blondes and the acclaimed coming ahead. But I digress. Yeah, Max, uh, better yeah. be careful about Julia Hart. Just saying. <laughs> well, be more sensible in your rap with this sensitivity generation of social media that can literally blast you for one out of context thing that you think hurts the identity of a person a community, or dare I say it, some sort of controversial topic. Because God knows, controversy breeds attention. That's all I got to say about that. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for tuning in once again to another fun, positive, open-minded, everything galore conversation on all things wrestling. This has been the ATW View, another impromptu, fun show and discussion in time, too. You want to know more about us? Know this. I'm just a simple man. He's just a preacher man. He's an all elite man. We have an all elite queen, an enforcer, an inquirer, a wrestler in himself. And the family continues to be strong every day with the mean king, et cetera. And who knows, maybe someone else might join us too. And shout out to, of course, the other queen of the family, uh, Cindy G, and uh, distant queen, uh, Kat, who I know is great friends with McChiva. But you want to know more about us? It's simply this we are fans of all things wrestling. Find the Twitter handles for most of the ACW crew in the description down below. I probably need to add the others, but I can't fit it all the top of my head. So I'm sure they'll probably get blasted for that in the chat. Uh, they can tag me and I'll take care of it. All right. I do what I can. And again, just interface with us on uh, Twitter. If you want just a fun, open-minded conversation on anything, any aspect and shout out to Jake, you decided I almost forgot about him on all things wrestling. Again, we are ATW. We love AEW, NJPW, GCW, PWG. Black Label Pro, MLW, you name it, wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports, video games, positive vibes, real talk galore. That's what ATW is all about. As always, I like to close. There are no winners, there are no losers, there are no betters, but there certainly is a lot to explore. There's just fans with opinions for this passion we all share. At the end of the day, folks, support one another, respect each other, be yourself, be true, be you. Just enjoy life. And enjoy wrestling too. It's as simple as that. That's all I got to say. So please like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Hit the bell next to the bit to know when the next video goes live or on demand on this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Help me keep growing this channel. Let's keep growing this community together. Shouts out to 100 and 
the Jimmy Desmond Women. Let's find you, Jimmy Grace Jr. on this platform. And shout out to everybody that's interfaced with us in some way in the wrestling community, too. It's only going to continue to go up and on from here with so much more unknown excitement to come in professional wrestling too and conversation. So that's all I got to say. I'm the Superman Noel Foster. He's the creature man, Casey Flynn. He's the uh, all elite King King Anthony. We hope you enjoyed this uh, platform. Take care, enjoy life. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. Treasure your fans and enjoy wrestling. There's never been a better time, more exciting time, more optimistic time to be a fan. We'll see you next time on the ATW view. We are ATW, and we are professional wrestling fans for life. Take care, y'all, and God help the WWE. Good night.